Right, folks, this is a new podcast from the two mics, and I'm going to give you old energy boy, MG, to introduce it. Yeah, we've edited out all the nonsense with Mike Porky Perry, so it might be a bit shorter than usual. Ha, 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 Good morning, I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Perry, you're listening to the two mics on Talk Sport. It's Porky's favourite weekend of the year, the FA Cup is upon us, and we're all over it here at Talk Sport with eight live commentaries starting with West Ham against Manchester City tonight. But it's not all good news. Millwall are facing eviction from their South London home, and we'll be telling you why it's an outrage. Also, China is clamping down on big money transfers, so that's that then. 08717 Coming up on the show, we'll be hearing from Porky's local team, and it's Porky Quiz Day as well. The questions all come from a Beatles Trivial Pursuit Special Edition. I'm predicting three out of ten. You're listening to the two mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry on Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. It is the end of the week. It is FA Cup weekend. We're all terribly, terribly excited, Mr. Parry especially. And it's time to say a very, very good morning to him. A very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike. And you're absolutely right. It is, honestly, it's like Christmas all over again, really, because the FA Cup starts this evening. Yes. Well, it doesn't, does it? We're being unkind to the smaller clubs because there have been two rounds of the FA well, Cup. the third round starts. Third round, the FA Cup, when yeah. the, uh, the, the top two uh, divisions come in. And it's, you know, it, it's the... It's the the weekend of dreams. It's where your dreams start. That you're going on that road to Wembley. We've got as far as the semi final last season. Last Absolutely. season. Absolutely, and and you know one step further. I think you thought it might be their turn, didn't you? Well, I did. I did. Yeah, of course I did. As yeah. you walked up Wembley yeah. Way. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I certainly did. Not and, when uh, you staggered back down it, of course, <coughs> at the end of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. You've just uh, put me. Into, By the way, uh, we can start depression. the show off already mm. with uh, three great tweets that have come in. Yes. Can we hear the rest of Mr. Parry's top ten chat up lines? Uh, says Jim. Oh right. Uh, okay. Here's one from uh, Mario. Who mm. Says, don't forget to remind Porky that the old are after him too what? for disrespecting them uh, and Ryan says I'm yeah. quite surprised to be yeah. hearing from Porky this morning I thought he might be on the run from Vinnie Jones oh no 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 after no. what you said no, about him yesterday that was just a bit of a laugh old Vinnie takes all that in uh, in good spirit yes he does um, so it's great to, that it's the um, it's the third round of the FA Cup Everton got a very very tough time I turn we're playing Leicester at home Leicester yes. are the Premier League champions they are uh, the form was dipped since they won the crown, but nevertheless, it's something I am not taking. Those are the massive favourites, though, to win it. Aren't I, they? I don't care. I mean, the problem is we beat uh, Leicester recently in the league, and you know, it's always about lightning stri- striking twice yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, so you'd be happy for a long FA Cup campaign for Everton. I'd you? love a long FA Cup campaign, and yeah. I hope that every other team sees their um, the strengths of, of their squad fully utilised within the FA Cup. Mm. Because apart from about three teams, possibly four. Because Manchester United are a lot of people's dark horses to um, to have a terrific run in the second half of the season for the Premier League crown. But apart from say four clubs, nobody's going to win the Premier I have League. To say, I so have go to for say, the FA Cup and I put your say, strongest teams out. I have to say, for me, uh, this is a little bit like an international break. You know, I can't wait for the Premier League to get back. I like watching Premier League football. So I don't that's particularly, a disgraceful attitude. I, I quite like watching a bit of Championship football. Actually, funnily enough, yeah. because that can be very exciting as yeah. well. But the FA Cup really, for me, has ceased to be of much interest. I'm afraid. Well, uh, you know, that's you. And, uh, well, that's just and, my point of view. Well, you can say what you like about it. I don't care. The FA Cup to me. I mean, well, you remember, don't care. remember, I went to the FA Very Cup dismissive. final in 1966, right? I don't care about and that. And Everton were there, and we won and it 3 2. I was um, young. Young. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but what I mean well, I is. I can imagine so. No, what I mean well, is. Do you have to be hoisted up on somebody's shoulders? No, because we had a seat. It was a bench, actually. Oh, really? There were no seats in those days. Yeah. All they did was. Yeah, so they... you were along the uh, the side of the pitch? No, 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 no. It was a bench that had been nailed to the terraces, really, because it was never no, really? built with seats in the first did place. They, yeah. have, they didn't have seats behind the goals, did they? Yes, they did, Are you yeah. Sure. Well, at the side of the I goals. Think I'm, talking no, about, yeah. I'm talking about yeah. along the side of the pitch. Uh, yeah, you don't mean on you know, the pitch. Not you on mean, either mean, end. I'm no, talking no. about on the yeah, side. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it, because I remember Wembley when it had those. To be honest, it was on the curve of the pitch and the and the yeah. area behind the goal. Yeah, because uh, behind the goal, it was standing only, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. With all the banners and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But you know, we were two 0 down, one three two against Sheffield Wednesday. Magic, magic memories. I'll never forget it's it. A long time forget. ago, that. Though. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, a lot of people listening to this mm. were not alive then. So and some of their parents. I will never forget the first time I saw the Twin Towers. As my dad's Morris Miner came over the hill at Harrow on the hill, actually. Well, you drove there. Excuse me, yeah. You're mm. right. Mm. <laughs> we had our annual general meeting yesterday afternoon. Awfully sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, and um, you may be suffering from the after effects of that. Uh, no, uh, I'm not. No, no. Long running meeting. No, there was no excess imbibement at all. But I tell no, you, absolutely I not. tell you what's a very interesting story this morning. Yes. What an opportunity for Millwall. What do you mean? An opportunity. Millwall, by the way, is how we pronounce it. Yeah, Millwall. 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 
Millwall. Uh, yeah, Millwall. You've got to have the uh, pronunciation. Anyway, anyway. Uh, the enunciation of the second syllable. Millwall. What, what an opportunity for them. No, 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 no. no. This... If you're going to say that you think Millwall yeah. should move out of South London, you definitely. are so far off the, the oh, mark. definitely. That you've gone completely bonkers um, mad. I mean, you have to understand that over the years, over the decades, Millwall's um, reputation and their image has been terribly badly tarnished. Well, it has been, but I mean, by the, by the, by the same token, yeah. um, you know, they've also cleaned up their act in a massive way. Well, I agree uh, you know, and, and they've done an awful lot of yes, work towards... Yes, I agree with that. Of course, famously... Uh, they had, who are you, as a manager for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah. But anyway, the position is that um, they've now reconciled themselves to the fact that they may have to well, move out of their famous decision's ground. decision's going to be made on Wednesday. We'd like to hear from some Millwall fans, actually, because I think this yeah. is an absolute disgrace, because what it looks like is mm. a very murky scenario where mm. the Labour-run council, yeah. right, uh, who employ a guy who, as chief executive, gets paid more than the Prime Minister for working three days a week. Right? Yes. And uh, we've been having to go at some of the public servants uh, that we know this, uh, this particular yeah. week here at TalkSport. Yeah. But apparently, uh, the, the, all the land around the Den is going mm. to be sold for redevelopment to yeah. a corporation uh, which appears to have ties to yeah. the Labour administration, That's right. That's and which right. is based offshore. But to be honest, it's a which great opportunity. Shocking. I mean, the modern Millwall fan... No, it's not a great opportunity. The modern They're Mil- talking about moving to Kent. Hang they don't on, come hang on. from Kent, they come from South London. Will you just please hear me out? The modern Millwall fan is a sort of middle-ranked, you know, middle-aged executive, mm. uh, wears a suit, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a far cry from the hooligan era that Millwall had well, sadly, lots of clubs had, sadly that, had to go through. I mean, lots of clubs had it. West Millwall had, had it worse than Chelsea anybody. had the F troop. I mean, you know, lots of clubs you had, never had went to Millwall. Hooligan play, uh, hooligan you never meant, went to Millwall and felt safe if you were an away fan. And I've been there a few times, and you know, in, in, in those days, because Millwall had such a, a terrible reputation. Now, what they can do now is move out of their scrubby little ground. And I, I, I it's I, not a scrubby little ground. When it, was the last time you were there? About uh, three years ago, yeah, four well, years ago. Well, it's not a scrubby little ground. Well, it's, it's, it's a lovely ground in the heart of the city, which is where it belongs. Of course, that's the new den, isn't it? Yes, because it is. the old one was knocked down like yeah. many years ago. Yeah. So, but yeah, but I don't. Mi- I'm I mean, not- I'm a big fan of, of football yeah. grounds, and you have said you are as well in the past. Yeah. A, f- a fan of football grounds, which are right in the middle of the town. I am or the city or whatever it is. I'm not surrounded being- by houses. It's yeah. not surrounded by yeah. you know car parks and vacant lots. It's surrounded by houses. I'm not being critical, but when you pass Millwall's ground, and I do sometimes on a train. On the train, yeah. It looks like a breeze blocking campus. I don't agree. It looks like a prison. No, I don't agree. And what you could do is, what you could do I don't is. What you've got against Millwall? I've got nothing against Millwall. Well, it sounds I'm, like you have. I'm on Millwall's side. I live in the catchment area of Millwall supporters. Right, right? okay. And it's a wonderful place, yeah. and the Millwall fans that I know are terrific people. So I won't yes. hear any of this nonsense about them being hooligans. No, but hang on. Being hang ghastly on. people. That's yeah, terrible. Look, you can't turn history on its head. They have had a reputation in the yes, past. Yes, in the past, sure. And, and it sticks with them today. What I'm saying is, the new Millwall, and they should call themselves New Millwall, right? Move out to the they Kent can't coast. Play outside of London. Move out to the North Kent coast, no. right? Get themselves a brand spanking new ground, which Absolute they nonsense. would, because their ground's going to be seized and, and, and redeveloped. Mm. And then, and then you've got well, a whole new football club. How about we try and club. stop it being seized and redeveloped? No, because no. I think we can start a campaign right here, right now. No, and this I want is to hear good. From Millwall fans, oh eight seven one seven double two double three double four. You know, West Ham have already had to move out of yeah. West Ham, yeah. So they're no longer in the place where they, they were very should happy be. when they moved. Yeah, but I bet they're not so happy now. Well, they were happy when they moved. Um, look, I want to appeal to the Millwall fans that I'm talking about, the middle-class Millwall fan, the new Millwall fan. Middle class. New Millwall can exist on Millwall the... Millwall is a working-class football club. On the, on the north coast been. of Kent. Please Always give me be. a call. Please give me a call. 08717 and explain to me how you agree with me. It's a fantastic opportunity for one of our more traditional clubs, tarnished and sullied by decades of poor behaviour and no. loutish, no. loutish um, very happenings unfair. amongst its fans. Being very unfair. To now re- reborn, reborn. Millwall could be reborn as but new Millwall, Millwall doesn't want to be reborn. and be a whole new football club. How about this from uh, Jamie? He says, what a div saying we would be better off out of South London. Of course it's you would be. It's disgrace and politics of ruling again. It's no, an no. absolute joke. No. Uh, Jamie says, modern Millwall fans still want to go Go down to the den on a Saturday for mm. a beer and a pie and mash. Shut this bloke up. No, I'm sorry. I'm on your side. I want Millwall. No, you want them to move into Kent? Yes, I do. I think and they where should. where exactly in Kent are they going to go? Well, somewhere in North Kent. Is somewhere in North Kent. Oh, what? You're just going to put up a football stadium Hang in on. the middle of some community that doesn't, you don't even ask if they want it? Land is much cheaper. I think you'll find it's that this is going to happen more and more if there are grounds surrounded by property, which Maybe is Maybe they should move to Sutton, where you live, and knock your gaff down, and they can build it there. Well, they've already got a football club in Sutton, which we're going to talk about later in the well, show. We're going to talk to the, uh, the football club in we Sutton. C- we in certainly fact, are. This is your local team. We certainly are. Well, yeah. they're a local team. Even though you keep pretending in... that you don't live anywhere near Sutton. Excuse me. They are uh, one of the teams near me in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, yes. OK? All right. Um, but listen, I, I just think, when I saw this this morning, I thought, wow, relocating from the no. London Borough of Lewisham this is a shocking to example. the county of Kent. This is a... You can't say that. They are murky. I'm not saying that they're in any way wrong yeah. or criminal or anything like that, yeah. but I'm saying they are murky. Well, because this company that is redeveloping the land... Uh, 
like it's registered offshore. Yeah. So that makes it murky for a start. There's a meeting, I believe, on Wednesday, Porky, at which mm. this is going to be decided. But yeah. it seems to me uh, that Millwall, as a football club, yeah. have more or less conceded that this could happen. Yeah. And that they may well have to find a new premises somewhere uh, on, the, as you say, the North yes. Kent coast. Yes. Uh, here's a, a quote from Steve Kavanagh, their chief executive. Mm. He says, the chairman has always been determined that this would never happen. But under such circumstances, any and every option would have to be considered yeah. to secure the football club yeah. and the Millwall Community Trust future as viable concerns. Yeah. Because basically, what it's going to mean mm-hmm. is that the London Borough of Lewisham, which mm-hmm. is where Millwall is, it's right. with a population the size of Iceland, yes. would be left without a professional sports club of any kind. Well, wow. and it means it also means yeah. a bit of, 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 of this widespread this because mm. Charlton Athletic and Leighton Orient might end up being next. Well, it, maybe it will be. Maybe that will happen. But I mean, it's basically a land grab by what, Lewisham what, what, Council. What, what is your great uh, interest in Millwall, anyway? As well, uh, like I said, I happen to live now in the catchment oh, area of Millwall see. Football so Club. So you're just frightened about getting so a few bricks through in your actual window, fact, are you? No, it's yeah. actually my local they, football club. Local football club. Oh, local how many times you've been to see them? I've never been to oh, see them. Oh, you've never been to see them. No. no. Oh, uh, but well, it is you know, my local football club. Getting a few tweets here from people like this from Johnny saying MG says he doesn't support anybody, but he's getting very defensive about everything about Millwall. Yeah, because it's part of the community. I don't want to see a football ground being moved out of the city. Why should I want to yeah. see that? Yeah, well, I don't want it, you know, re- you know, there's enough yuppified buildings yeah. going up all around me. It's a chance for rebirth. Like keep... It's not a rebirth. It it's is. a community that they have in Millwall, around Millwall, Bermondsey, you know, uh, Surrey Keys, that whole area uh, of Lewisham as well. And, you know, they've got no business uprooting it Millwall and kicking him out. Millwall phoning in. John here, a Millwall fan. I agree. We should move. We should talk to this boy. He well, knows I'll what he's what, talking about. I'll tell you what. Let's talk to Danny first, who uh, doesn't yeah? want to move. And then yeah. we'll talk to John, who says he does. Yeah. Uh, Danny, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Morning, chaps. Yeah, hi, Danny. Uh, but no, we don't want to go. We, why are we going to move again? We've already been moved once. Yeah. Why are they going to do it again? And why are we going to go down to Kent? Well, because that, that, because it's a nicer London. place. I, no, we, you're talking out of your backside, mate. What? You are. That's He's a bit absolutely harsh. right. That's a bit harsh. Quite right, Danny. Seriously, why would you want to move to Kent? What about Gillingham? Why are we going to go and tread on their doorstep? Well, We've got a nice little catchment area. We find some decent players around our area. Yeah. Why are we going yeah. to move? Well, you're going to move, mate, because it's a great opportunity to make your club a, you know, a, a, no. a, a better, a better product, a better no, place to be. Listen, we're happy, we're happy with what we got. Yeah. We don't expect a lot. We're happy yes. with what we've got. We well, you see, you see, Danny, that's the voice of a loser. No, we're on, happy with do what not, we've got. No, do not insult, do not insult Millwall you're fans who are ringing in. Your colours, mate. It's nothing to do with being a loser. Your colours are your colours. Exactly yeah. yeah. right. All my life. Yeah. I come from Bermondsey. Yeah. I don't want to go down to Kent to watch football. Yeah. Who wants to travel down the A2 on a Saturday morning? Yeah, it's a, well, it's a well, nightmare. That... Well, apart from the fact that it's got a 30 mile an hour speed limit on it half the way down there as well. Danny, yeah, listen, exactly. what do you know What do you know about the situation? I mean, can it be salvaged as far as you're aware? Uh, it, it doesn't look like it. We've put, with, from what I can gather, our chairman offered to buy the land around it and they refused it. Right. So well, what's... they've also... Listen, Lewisham Council. Yeah. Two years ago, they was going to lose Lewisham Hospital. Right. Who put in all the hard work? You had all of the Millwall supporters, the Millwall players, yeah. doing a march to save that hospital. And you saved we it. Save that hospital, and all they're doing is treading on it. Yeah, well, it's... Lewisham yeah. Council are a liberty. It's not a yeah. good feeling, but it'll be better horrendous. for you in the end, Danny. Absolutely be better horrendous. For you in the end. Danny, listen, thanks for your call. Let's yeah. talk to John, yeah. uh, who is a Millwall fan, who exactly. says they should move. John, what have you got to say? Hello there, mate. Um... Well, I'm finding out because I, I haven't been to the Millwall for quite some time now because of the trouble. Mm. My wife won't let me take the kids. Right. Because of the like trouble that they had there. And when mm. was the last time you were there, John? Oh, about six months ago. Mm. Six, seven months ago. So mm-hmm. it's still I'm bad, you say? Yeah, I had to go on my I went on my own, but mm-hmm. it's, it's just the, the foul language as well, to be honest. But that's the same in every football ground you go to, though. Well, I think it's a bit more prevalent no, at Millwall. I mean, I take I, I, I stopped taking my son in Premier League games yes, because yes. of that same problem. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you know, there's a fathering aspect to that, and, and John, I think, is quite right yeah. there to be concerned. I mean, John, wouldn't it be nice to go to a green field site for a football stadium, a great esplanade yeah, as you walk up to where? it on the North Kent well, coast? Well, you keep saying the North Kent coast. Give me a place. I can't because I don't know the North Kent coast officially so well. So you just want to shove it out there somewhere? Well, I'm just saying that, you know, there are surveyors, there are there are landscapers, there are people who know about property in that part of the world. I'm sure it could be done, John, to the benefit of all. Well, I, I personally think that they should move in West Ham. Mm-hmm. 
They should, what, because, move to West Ham? What, you mean move yeah. into the Olympic Stadium, the London Stadium? Yeah, let's share with West Ham. You're going to come across as a typical Millwall fan, no, John, no, I think point. I think that's rather a perverse kind of argument. But, John, we appreciate you calling. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, let's talk to uh, Tom, who's a Millwall fan. Right. Tom, very good morning to you. I'm not sure the last caller was a Millwall fan, to be mm. honest. Uh, to be honest, I don't think so either. He didn't have a clue. The first caller was spot on, what mm. he said. Yeah. You know, we... I understand, obviously, there is a reputation with Millwall, but there is with every club in London and most clubs in England. Mm. Look at, not recently, Chelsea, they were in the paper for the racism when they were away. In, you know, in Paris, yeah. Yeah, but exactly. that, I mean, every you're club right, does have right. an element of it, much less so than it used to be. But but Porky is right in mm. one sense that mm. Millwall always no, had listen, the worst I, reputation. I'll take, take my kids down there. Yeah. I'll take the kids down there and... Don't get me wrong, there is some atrocious language and sometimes I feel like turning around and saying, listen, pipe mm. down. Yeah. Mm. But mm. it happens everywhere, every club you go. That's true. You know, it's, it happens, it's going to happen, you're not going to change it, so mm. just lay lay off of that, leave that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what the first caller said about doing what do they do for the community, it's just mm. absolutely spot on, you know. Mm. They do so much and lose from council of throwing it back in their face. You know, I understand... Well, here's the thing that I find... I I don't know how much you know about the situation, but the Mm. uh, AMS Millwall Supporters Organisation has sent an open letter, right, hasn't it, uh, to a number of people, including the mayor, Sir Steve Bullock, uh, who apparently has stepped back from the whole situation because he, amazingly, is a director of a company that's associated with the company called Renewal, which is the the, the development corporation. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, Mike, I don't... I haven't looked deeply into it, what's going on. Mm. I'm just calling because obviously I'm a yeah. I'm a Millwall fan. I have been all my life and I've listened to the radio this morning and heard this. Mm. Mm. I knew about it. I knew yeah. ifs and buts and I knew they were trying to put housing up. You know, we always made a joke about having a block of flats at the bottom of the car park. Yeah. Sure. You know, but yeah. I understand, you know, it's the modern era now. Everyone's got to kind of get on with what, what the world wants. These well, that's days. right, and property well, values. Like but, it's only, but it's only what part of the world wants, uh, isn't it, Tom? Because yeah, yeah, exactly. if, if, this, yeah, is, if yeah. this is the beginning of something... Got to go with the end? flow. No, you haven't got it. You would say that because you're a property millionaire, right? It's, and you have oh, no care. Outrageous. You have no care for the common man, even though you pretend to be the man most, of the people. Most people who live the in, in line, their own house in this country are property line, millionaires. They don't no. single me out. Oh, really? What? Somebody who lives in the middle of Bradford who owns their own house is a millionaire? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, Tom, the point is this, right? This could affect every small football club. I don't mean small oh, by definitely. fan size, but I mean small financially mm. because they won't be able to compete with the developers. Listen, I know obviously the big clubs do so much because of their financial gain in comparison to the smaller clubs like mm. Millwall, Colton, Orient and stuff like that. But the amount... I've been in there in the, in the week. I used to work in the executive lounges and the executive oh, like, yes. bars. And the amount they do for charities, the NHS, they do so much for the NHS... Age UK, you know, all these charities they yeah. work for, yeah. are local charities, you know, the amount of stuff they do for the kids in the in the Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have like to stop that. doing that. You wouldn't have to stop doing well, that. So, uh, I mean... Mike, Mike, Paul, Paulky, listen, what, yeah. you want all these kids from Bermondsey, yeah. right, who yeah. probably don't, listen, No, not putting anyone down, they might not have a great deal of money. Right. But you want their mums and dads to troll them all the way down to Kent when their club's around the corner where they live now. Well, you'd get a whole new... You'd get a whole new well, what you're saying batch is, of supporters, oh, wouldn't so you? So you just yeah. leave behind the people who, well, no. whose families have no, no. supported Millwall Well, it's for only decades. a generational thing. For generations. It? Generational no, you're thing, talking absolute no, no, twaddle. No, you've got to look at twaddle. the world as, uh, you know, in the future, not just the past. You know, you can't say, so why don't you oh, move it's Everton. the working men's club. Why don't you move Everton somewhere like the Lake District where they haven't got a, a decent football club apart the, from Carlisle? The working class doesn't exist anymore, right? It's, a, it's an really? anachronism. It's not, yeah, it's Tom, like, you can't say, oh, it's a working man's club. It's a Tom, working class cl- Tom, club. Is, is Wait, Millwall... If Millwall had the money, yeah. if Millwall had the money that Everton have got, mm. yeah, we wouldn't be getting pushed out now, would we? Well, I don't know because Everton looking for a new ground anyway. Well, no, Everton, are going, of, yeah, Everton are going to go and push a load of Everton are going to push a load of people out of their homes to build their new ground. They want to buy a new ground. We don't want to move. No, you don't want to move. Well, like you, you see, the money. but you, don't you, you think you're money. holding up progress, Tom? Don't you think you're really holding up progress? I mean, what are you going to be? You're just, holding up the show. Just, a, too just, late. just a tiny little club in a tiny little enclave of a tiny Incorrect. little part of London forever no. and ever and ever. You got to think bigger than that, Tom. Is a Premier League ground. We could have a Premier League ground there. That is a Premier League ground. If we put a bit more money into the ground, mm-hmm. we could have a Premier League. No. They do filming there for Sky in the week. Yeah. Exactly yeah, well, right. Right. That's, that's all right. Would you like me to give him a slap, Tom? Millwall style. Uh, listen, give See? Polky a proper dig. Resort to violence. I'm going to eh? give you a dig. Resort Tom, thank violence. you very much for your call. We'll take more of your calls coming up very shortly. Millwall are being forced out by greedy, horrible capitalist developers just like Porky. <laughs>
This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Mm. The Porky Quiz coming up a little bit later on, of course. Yes. We've got a special Trivial Pursuit edition, a uh, Beatles edition. Yes. Uh, which we're going to test you on. I'm looking I'm forward to that. Uh, three out of ten. I am looking one. forward to and that. And also, of course, it's FA Cup weekend. We've I think I'll get my high score ever, you know. Yeah, you reckon? You, mm. you reckon? Mm. We've got loads and loads of FA Cup stuff coming up as well. We're going to go yep. to Sutton. Yep. Uh, we're going to talk to all sorts of people. Uh, and, of course, ahead of the game tonight, live on Talk Sport West Ham against Manchester City. Mm. Uh, a couple of tweets here before we go back to your calls. Yeah. 08717 Ricky says, West Ham when we were founded, is what Newham was called. Mm-hmm. So West Ham are still in West Ham. Upton Park was actually Plasto anyway. Yeah. Uh, Pickle says Everton should relocate their new stadium to St. Helens. And Connor says, be It'd fair be to mad. Porky on his portfolio. He walked into an estate agent thinking it was a pub. Yeah. Uh, in for a Pinot Grigio, left with a slum. Uh, uh, excuse <laughs> me. Um, and David here says, if this is allowed... And by the way, Dave, that's A-L-L-O-W-E-D, yeah. not A-L-O-U-D. Well, you know, he's made yeah, it, yeah, yeah, brief, it's okay. a brief... It's okay. I, 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 I accept that. It was done in haste. If this is allowed, it will happen all over the UK. Exactly. Uh, it says uh, only the super-rich clubs could fight it off. Well, I, I tell you what, one of these days, even the super-rich clubs won't be able to fight it off... Just just, just think how valuable the land is that Chelsea's ground is on. And, and even more so, mm. think how valuable the land is that Fulham's ground is well, on. Well, exactly. It's on the edge of yeah, the river. But nobody's going to bully... It's on uh, the edge of the river. Nobody's going to bully Roman Abramovich into selling his club uh, and, and the grounds on which that club exists. It'd be very interesting to without, see... Without him getting a very, very large amount of money for it. It'd be very interesting to see if Fulham's ground is where it is now in 20 years' time. Right. And I cast no aspersions against the people yeah. who run Fulham or anything like that, right. but economic Well, that's owned by the guy from America, isn't it? The, e- Jagu- uh, the Jaguar is that's, owner. That's, that's right. Economic Jackson realities Bill. may one day kick in. Yeah. Well, listen, let's talk to Everton fan who's called Peter uh, from Merseyside. Peter, very good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, guys. Um, I'd like to take Mike Paddy to task. Quite yes. right. Uh, as an Everton fan and a season ticket holder myself, Mike, yeah. I seem to remember you wanting to move us out of the city in 2006 up to Kirby, yeah. which which is outside. It doesn't come under Liverpool City Council. Does it ring a bell with you, Mike? Yes, it rings a bell, mate, and you are quite right to put me take me to task on that. The point is that, in my view, that was the best thing for the club at the time, OK? It was a hard oh, okay, decision. Mike. Certainly a public inquiry didn't think so, did it, Mike? No, it didn't. You're absolutely it was right. A public inquiry, and it was kicked right into touch because... Yeah. You, you remember the details? It was a very large supermarket that mm. was trying to build us, and I think it was described yeah. by Liverpool City Council as um, a, a pigsty yeah. of a stadium. Yes. That's the way it was described. Yes, that's now, not a nice way to describe a new stadium, is it? No, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't. It was coming as a flat pack. Stadium, like yes. it wasn't a new stadium, it was up Paul. And you can go away on the hand and keep having an RCC website and have a look at what it was. Yeah. But also, you, you, you just seem to ha- have this thing about ripping the heart out of communities. No, and guess, guess what? We're about now, yeah. Negotiate a three hundred million pound new stadium yes. on the North Dock in our homeland, only only one and a half miles from where we are. I know that's great, isn't it? And I'm delighted that it's come to that, Pete. And with Evertonians like you supporting the club, we're going to get greater, no, thought, bigger, I mean, but, mightier but, still. You know, why not do what what Liverpool did, yeah. which is just to build up the stadium that you've already got? We can't do that, Pete. Can we? Anfield is that they've now retained Anfield. We, we, as couldn't, Anfield, do, we couldn't do that. Everybody wanted that to happen, but this, I'm afraid the little streets well, around Goodison <laughs> Park, the terraced houses, they just couldn't be. Well, the same as the little streets around Anfield, surely. No, they bought them. That's not exactly true. But what I'm saying is Millwall take on board what you're saying, yeah. they, they could end up just going in, into oblivion like Everton would have. Yeah. If but move Pete, Pete, Pete. You just seem to want to... You, no, you somebody, want to somebody's only half-joking, Peter, here and saying, why don't they just move to Milton Keynes like Wimbledon did? No, you know, Pete, I mean, that's the problem. Peter, have you ever been to Millwall, mate? Seriously? I mean, uh, no, I haven't. No, well, uh, honestly, if you went, you'd understand why I think it's a good thing. Mike, does it matter? There's a lot of places I haven't been to, but yeah. I, I certainly don't want to start relocating everybody. Yeah. You know, I've never been to Timbuktu neither. No, you know, it's not I'm bad, not... actually. I've been there. <laughs> well, 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 you're heading back down there. You might want to escape <laughs> a few Millwall fans. Yeah, Peter, yeah. listen, thank you very yeah. much indeed. Let's yeah. talk to Pete, uh, yeah. who's a Chelsea fan. Pete, mm. uh, very good morning to you. What would you like to say? Uh, mate, yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I think Porky's on to something here. Thank he's, you. He's a stroke of genius. What? Um, thank you. Because uh, after they... After they've moved Millwall, what yeah. they could do... They could move Chelsea is, down the A3, down no, towards no, no, sort of no, Jessington. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because Liverpool's a bit overcrowded, they could move Everton as well. Because uh, Swansea are getting relegated. I think you're vacancy. taking the Mickey, Pete. There'll be a vacancy for a Premier League club in Wales, so... Mm. Everton mm. could move there. There's lots of open space in yeah. the middle of Wales. Yeah, I think you're taking the mickey there, Pete. Yeah. Porky, of course, with his Welsh roots, would be more no, than happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, what, right. about, uh, what about the plans for Chelsea's move? How far advanced are they? 
Uh, well, the plans have gone in, and the um, the the, mm. the council are sounding uh, the planning people are sounding positive about it yep. now, which is which is always a good sign because they was always against it. And it's more or less staying uh, where it is, isn't it? Also, yeah, yeah, it's staying where it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I, I could never understand why you had a problem. Well, the problem was because always the council wouldn't let you go above forty two thousand without a second exit. Yeah, I see. Evacuating yeah, evacuating the ground, and yeah. that was that was the only problem. Yeah. That it, it ever was. It's sorted now, but you see, you see, Pete, don't... by railways and, and yeah, uh, yeah. cemeteries. A new ground for any club means a new era, a, a, you know, a, a new generation, a new start, and that's why I think it's a great opportunity for Millwall. No, no, yeah, Millwall's yeah, that, been that, sullied that's, in the past. That's fine if the club and the fans want it. But what yep. you shouldn't have is clubs being forced to go places they don't want to. Well, well, I, as, I, as I've said earlier, and as I've, of, of other yeah. people. and as I've said earlier, Pete, I mean, this this will we, open we, the. F- we had a, we had a close shave years ago yeah, yeah. with with Marler Estates trying to get right. rid of us. Oh, but this will Pete the foresight of Ken Bates. He, he got the, the uh, pitch owners, the pitch owners yeah. association. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Pete, the thing uh, is, right? This now, will this will open the floodgates, will it not? Because if this does go through, and it looks like it might well do, um, you know, developers will suddenly start looking at football grounds Ooh. inside, you know, major cities. Going, actually, this is a great idea. Yeah. How about they'll, you know, but, they'll go after, they'll go after, uh, but can you I know, just, Hearts um, up in Edinburgh. They'll go after yeah. Rangers in, in Glasgow. To Pete. They'll, they'll go after Birmingham City. I mean, That's you know, right, yeah. let me just say to Pete because Pete, you said if the fans don't want it, you know, fans don't always know what's best for their club because they're driven by the wrong motives. They're driven by generations, absolute nonsense. generations of, nonsense. Of, of misguided loyalties and all sorts of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the fact is, the fans yeah. are the clubs. So, yes. ultimately, if they don't know what's best for their club and the yes. club goes down because of it, well, mm. OK, that, that's, that's, that's yeah. so big. That, that's a fact of life. That's <laughs> the law of the jungle, if you like. Well, yeah, OK, uh, but I mean, you know, it's like... What you can't have is mm. clubs just being pushed around and moved to places and expecting... Playing with people's <laughs> loyalties, you know, you're talking about, work, you know, we keep on about working class people and the cost yeah. of football and everything. Yes. You know, the people who are, are grassroots supporters of, of Millwall, you know, because we're yeah. talking about them for now. Sure. Um, they can't afford to go troll out the Well, you the see, the same, you know, yeah, but you see, the point huge. is, point is, mate, you're trying to make out that all Millwall fans wear flat caps and no, scarves no, and they all, no, you know, walk no, around no, with not. greyhounds on a lead and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's, that sort of working class is gone. You know, the Alf Garnet era is over. And no, now, no. and now the world's got to move on and Millwall have got to move on with it. And that's, and, and that's the biggest thing that football generally is suffering with mm. is that we are pushing the people, the, the working class people, the people yeah. who are on low income mm. out of the game. Yeah. They can't afford to go and watch okay. football now, and and football is suffering for it. Mm. You know, my my club's suffering for yeah. it. You know, okay, not not the hideously expensive. We're no more expensive to watch than anyone else. Mm. But um, I don't get there as often as I used yeah. to. Yeah, well, but I mean, it is getting harder and harder. Now. Listen, Pete, we've got, we got, we got, we got loads of people to get on. So thanks yeah. very much indeed for your call. Let's yeah. Sanjay, who's an Arsenal fan. Indeed. Sanjay, hi. Oh, hello, guys. You all right? Yeah, yeah very, very well. Good, what would you like to say? I think, Falky, the problem you have is that, like most legends and geniuses, you're way ahead of your time. Thank you. The people don't understand you. But um, I think on this one, mate, you're a bit wrong. I think the Millwall fans should put their foot down. Yeah. And I think Mike Graham's right. It's mm. just the thin edge of the wedge. They'll go after one club, then another, then another. Yeah, but Mike Graham's just playing be... to the audience That's here, not true. Sanjay. Absolutely he, he couldn't no, care. Excuse me, do not, do well, not, uh, do not affix. You couldn't care less affix, about Millwall. Hang on, do not affix your tawdry if beliefs. If I wanted to buy popularity, if I wanted to buy popularity, I'd be walking up and down outside Millwall's ground now, banging a drum, saying, you know, Millwall must stay. But I don't call popularity like he does. Corky, the thing is, it's like the Shocking. question is, would you move to LBC? Would I move to LBC? They never have him at LBC. No, they, 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 also, uh, he can't work on his own. <laughs> not allowed. No, no, it's not that. It's just that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy where I am, put it that way. Reasonably happy. Except for having him in the studio. Yeah. We're Millwall fans. They're happy where they are. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so why, well, should they, why don't you move to North Kent, see how you like it? Yeah, fans don't always know what's good for them. That's the problem, Sanjay. I mean, look, you've got a brilliant new ground. What, you know, what are you worrying about? You don't need to get involved in the debate, do you? Millwall, yeah, fans, Millwall fans have been offered yeah, a unique opportunity. Opportunity, unique. 
It's now, we've got it. lots and lots and lots of, uh, of, of great tweets, lots more calls yes. as well. Sanjay, thank you very much indeed. 08717 David says, Mr. Mike Parry is now on collision course with Millwall fans. Uh, let's get no, Everton not. sold. No, no. Uh, here's one from uh, Alex who says, I've never heard so much rubbish from Porky. You mm. can generate new fans. That's everything that's wrong with football. What? Absolutely right. Mm. Uh, Scott says, Porky, we moved locally and have a new stadium on the cheap, and it's still the worst thing our club has ever done. And he's a West Ham fan. And that exactly yeah, is, yeah. is the problem because they're still in London. You know, these people are not saying to Millwall, yes. don't worry, you can move a mile down the road yes. or even two miles down mm-hmm. the road and go mm-hmm. down to, say, Catford or somewhere yep. like that. They're yep. saying, get out of London. So they will not even be anywhere near where they have been for a hundred over a hundred years. See the th- see the, the sort of thoughts you put in people's minds. What's Scott has, has tweeted us and mm. he said, uh, "Is there any chance at all that Porky's passing for Millwall to leave because he has some sort of interest in the redevelopment yes. going well, on in that part of London?" That, has, that, has, that thought had crossed my well, mind. Well, I mean actually. that's outrageous. Are that's, you involved with this company in any uh, way? Of course not, and I don't have any influence on what happens to uh, land in that part of London, as far as I know. And uh, the idea that I could possibly be involved in that is an insinuation which I bitterly resent and it's put into the fans minds and into their heads by you who are continually harassing oh, you're me. You're the one who says you've got a property me. portfolio worth millions. I've never said that. You've said that. You keep saying that. Mm. All I've ever said is that I have Excuse an investment. Me. Well, this I is not investment. about you. This is about a very, well, very well, famous well, old football start club t- in London. Don't start having people out there that I've, I've got, you know, insidious reasons for wanting to well, close down I their football ground. I didn't say that, ground. but they are assuming that because of your uh, dodgy Dundee motives. Straight. The Lib Dems are on side here with the Millwall fans as well. They say the only compelling case that's been made is that this renewal scheme will be a disaster for the local community. That comes from Bobby Dean for mm. the part of the Lib Dems Parliamentary Party. Yes. Millwall FC is the largest sporting asset Lewisham has and their future cannot be jeopardised by this luxury scheme with no regard to affordable housing. Mm. Lewisham should withdraw the plans and start again, this time properly involving the football club and the local community. Where did you get all that drivel from? This is what has been said in Parliament about this stuff. In this Parliament? is a big story. Parliament? What, you, you trust MPs? I don't trust MPs, You're no. deri- you, you, but you, you I treat I, MPs I, with derision. No, I don't. We, I had, treat an M- some MPs. we had an MP we treated treat, with derision tre- this week treat, because he got his I, facts wrong. I treat one particular MP with derision, but mm. that's another story. Mm. I will support the Lib Dems in their support of Millwall not moving and not destroying the local community by putting up some yummy oh, yeah, blob of flats. Yeah. <laughs> you have no interest in this story whatsoever because you're a snob, yeah. you're a capitalist, yeah. you're a property owner, and you would love to raise yeah. the entire yeah. section of South London to the ground if you could make a few bots. Oh, I'm sorry, I've just discovered MG stands for Millwall Graham. Is that right? Beating the Millwall drum. This is talk sport. Fine popularity. Well, now then, why are you taking me to task? Because I've right, been to wait, Just wait a second, right? right? Let's not forget that Den is only 23 years old, uh, says uh, Chris, who's a new Millwall Den, fan and a, a shareholder. Yeah. He says, by today's standards, this is one of London's newest grounds. So what yeah. chance have some of the older grounds got if this actually happens? Yeah. No, I, what I'm telling you is, is that I've just been told mm. by somebody who knows these things yes. that the last time you were in Millwall, yeah. you were actually in the boardroom. Uh, yes, I was, actually. So, man of the people, Parry, once yeah. again strikes. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have any idea about what normal football fans do or yeah. think because you're never with them. You're hang always on. with the directors hang of the club. Hang on, Who hang were on. you with in the boardroom? Um, well, I was invited... Who were you with? I was invited by Mr Theo Pafitas, my friend. Your friend? My friend. He's a multi-millionaire. Is that right? He, uh, he was the major shareholder at uh, Millwall. somebody here wants to go out with his daughter? Um, yeah, a guy called Don't Rick. Don't have to give his name away. No, it was Rick. Yeah. And um, Mr. Petitas always used to say, yeah, Rick, but they left the first letter of his name off the front of his name. Yeah. Uh, that's a, it's that a family show. It's unfair. a family show. We're not yeah. going to say anything Let's like that. Let's talk to Eddie, who's a Millwall fellow. I'll come yeah. back to you in a moment. Yeah. Eddie, very good morning to you. What would you like to say? Yeah, I, I, I've been supporting Millwall for nearly 60 years. Oh, but, dear. And my my wife's been supporting them even longer, and her family was Millwall supporters. Yes. I've never seen the amount of trouble that this uh, Mike Perry keeps talking about. Right. Uh, Obviously, most grounds have trouble. Mm. All, all, whatever ground I've been to, uh, the supporters swear. I don't agree with it, but they yes. do. Yes, yes. Are, yes you, um, do you, are you saying, Eddie, that uh, Millwall fans get a, a bad rep for things that they haven't done? Yes, I do. Right. Why do you think that is? Because I never see the trouble going. We had a bit of trouble at Wembley when yeah. Millwall fans were fighting each other. Yeah. But... The same happens in West Ham. The same happens in no on every ground that go you go to. I, I, I really, I've, and I've been to a lot of grounds. But Eddie, Eddie, wouldn't you prefer your grandchildren to go to a football ground in a green field site where the no. sun shines, not no. some tawdry concrete streets to a breeze block ground that looks monotonous and carries a reputation of trouble and violence? Wouldn't you want a new dawn for your grandchildren? No, because that's where that's where Mills, uh 
history is, and that's where I want to be. I mean, what, what do I want to travel right down in Kent for? Well, it's nice. It's no, no, yeah, exactly. It's the Garden of England. The trouble is, Eddie, Porky well, doesn't understand community because he has no care well, for the community. Well, he doesn't about. give a monkeys about where he lives yes, as I long do. as he thinks that he lives in a nice street where there are no horrible people. I look after the, the point, homeless. Eddie, the point about uh, that Eddie's... Would you stop trying to make this about you? What? This is not about you. It's will about you, football Will you club. keep giving out misinformation no, about me? the point Eddie is, right, is, is that Millwall does a lot for the community. The community is, is formed around the football club. Club, and why should it move? Look, why should it move? Well, I mean, it, my wife and mm. go there every game. Right. It's a family yeah. club. Yeah, you got, but Eddie, you I'm can't hold back progress. Them. You can't hold back progress, mate. It's a family mate. club. Listen. I mean, I mean, if you had your way, we'd still have the old Wembley Stadium, wouldn't we? Yeah, where well, would we, we well, be well, there? We probably should where have, we have be the old Wembley Stadium. Yeah. It's a lot better than the be new. A one. laughing stock Let's around the world. Let's talk to Steve, who's down in Dartford in Kent. Steve, very good morning to you. Do you want Millwall to move to Dartford? No, I don't. Yeah. No, I don't. Why not? Mike Graham. As Porky took his tablets this morning. Well, I tell I you what, actually, yeah. I, I, I was joking before about giving him a slap, but I'm seriously getting wound up enough yeah, to give him yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't what worry about Porky it. doesn't understand, that mm. is a community. Millwall Football Club is a community. Mm-hmm. Let me give you some examples. Yes. I don't, I don't know where Porky wants to relocate Millwall. Yes. But Millwall <laughs> Football Club do a lot for the elderly for the disabled. I've heard all this, but you can still do that. There's elderly people in, in Kent, you know. Hang on, Porky. There's en- elderly because people in Kent. Would you mind letting because, Steve speak? Hang on, Porky. Yeah, go on. Because that can be the highlight of their fortnight is going to a football match in Bermondsey. Right. Now, you want to put them on trains yeah. with their mobility scooters, mm. children, yeah. where are they going to get to games? Well, hang, hang, hang on, hang Steve. On. You're trying to make out that Millwall only have pensioners as fans. No, no, Porky. It's a community. Yeah. Millwall were catalysts yeah. in kicking out racism. Yes. Did they not? Yes, they were. Right. Very rightly so. They've so. done a hell of a lot of good work in Lewisham. Yeah, I'm not denying that. I'm not well, denying that. We've already heard about how Millwall fans more or less single-handedly schools. saved the hospital. Mm. They go to schools, the, the footballers. Yeah. They meet the children. And you want to relo- relocate us yeah. on a farm th- or Lewisham. Yeah. In a farmer's field, mm. build a, what you you used to say, oh, football stadiums are cathedrals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why should we do that? Yeah, but hang on, the new den's not a cathedral, what Steve. About all the local businesses... It is in, it is in South London. Game, it's not. All these businesses are thriving because of supporters. Yeah, the new den is a breeze block <laughs> building which barely it's resembles a, uh, a football stadium. Looks to me like a, count, well, a block of council How would you flats. know? You were in the boardroom. Yeah, I was in the boardroom, yeah, because I was Steve, a guest of Mr doesn't know, doesn't know the meaning of life. He's, he goes to football matches, he sits in the boardroom, he sits in Not the director's true. box. He has no clue what ordinary fans think. Yeah, he, he, he's just... Honestly, he, uh, Mike Graham, mm. give him his medication. I if will. he's taken it, yeah. tell him to go and phone his consultant. You don't have to, to resort it. to, uh, you know, to um, <laughs> offensive language. Never mind the liquid right? kosh, uh, Steve. Steve. I'll, I'll, give him, I'll give him the real one. Now, how about this from Kevin? Mm-hmm. Now, you mm-hmm. might know something about this, Mr. Parry. Right. The three clubs in the borough of Hammersmith and Fulham, QPR, who are you, Fulham and mm-hmm. Chelsea, mm-hmm. have covenants on their grounds for protection. Yes. Now, why does Millwall not have that? Well, that's their problem. I mean, it's only well, 23... their problem? It's only a 23-year-old stadium. It's not like that's we're not knocking down, the ca- you know, the... the new camp, you know. It's not like we're knocking down, you know, the ground that has, you know, how born... How old do you think the new camp is? Born this... Uh, over 100 years old. Uh, born this brilliant club with its tradition, and they've only ever got to one cup final. That's it. Uh, uh, Matt says this. Ask Wimbledon fans how relocating out of Wimbledon affected them. Porky's mm. talking out of his backside. Uh, well, I, you see, I don't like this offensive language. You, you know, it, it strikes me that when people start losing the argument, you know, it's time to, you know, to, to, to start poking Porky with a bit of How profanity. many clubs own their ground rather than lease it from local authorities? If Millwall have to move, it could be the first of many. Well, Man- Manchester City lease yeah. their ground, I think, don't they, from the local authority? I think they do, yeah. You know? And uh, West Ham do, don't mm. they? Yeah. Um, well, we've already read this one out from West Ham. Mm. I, mean, West, I mean, ask any West Ham fan yeah. what moving has yes. done for their club. Not, you know, it's taken them about six months to recover yes, but, and to start yes. playing the kind of football they were playing before they went there. But that deal is now settling down, isn't it? We all know that. You well, know? it looks like it might be settling yeah. down, but yeah. it, is a very, it was a very fractious and a very difficult time. Well, it's always going to be got, difficult. They got to the stadium and worked out that actually it's not fit for football. You yeah. know, it's only fit for uh, for athletics. Yeah. The seats are all banked the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, you can't see the, 
the, the ground for, for quite from quite a long way away. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots of the uh, areas around the football pitch are covered in astroturf. Yeah. Look at Scott you know, There's not enough ability to steward it properly. Okay. You know, it's not always yeah, the thanks, answer to build a that. new. It's not always the, the answer to build a new stadium. Thanks for that I mean, recap reason, of, a, of, of an reason, al- athletic stadium. The only reason you slippery Sam, athletic stadium. The only reason you slippery Sam mm-hmm. have changed mm-hmm. your tune on mm-hmm. a new stadium is because now Everton have decided to build a new stadium. Yes, so now right. suddenly you're all for it. Yes. You used to be all for keeping Goodison Park and rebuilding well, it. Well, everybody wants to keep their ground if it's a worthy ground. Goodison Park is a cathedral. It's been there since 1878, uh-huh. so we know what we're talking about. Millwall's ground is 23 years old. And as Scott here says, Scott says, Porky, we moved locally, we have a new stadium on the cheap, and it's still the worst thing our club has ever done. That just about sums it up. I've Except he's a West Ham fan. I've already read that one yes, out. Yes, I know. Well, I thought I'd read it. Up? No, 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 listen because you read it out than... in the wrong context. No, listen to something other than your own voice once in a while, you might actually learn something. Not at all. When are they going to teach a dog to speak? Because that's got to happen eventually. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. You're listening to the two mics on Talk Sport. It used to be Porky's favourite weekend of the year, but if this tweet is anything to go by, I'm not sure it's going to be your perfect weekend, mm-hmm. and despite the fact the FA Cup is on. Uh, this is from Charlie, who's a Millwall fan, yeah. so I'm going to have to turn this off soon before I get tooled up and take the door off the Talk Sport studios. What? It's going to be like a lock, stock and two smoking barrels around here. Violence you know, never solved you anything. curb your ridiculous views about Millwall moving, because, of course, I believe that, that they should be allowed to stay. Uh, we'll take more of your calls, 08717 We're going to talk China coming up. We're going to talk about Arsenal's new plane. And, of course, the Porky quiz as well uh, is going to be a version of Trivial Pursuit, all about the Beatles. I'm predicting two out of ten. You're listening to Two Mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry on Talk Sport. Got loads and loads of tweets here, Mr. Parry, that we should mm-hmm. read out. You can tweet us, of course, at the two mics, at IROMG and at Mike Parry 8. Sky Blue Gaz says, Porky is the King Herod of Millwall. Danny what? says, Mr. Parry only thinks about how he can make money or leans towards the side of arguments they're all about making money. Not Always. at all. Not at all. Steve says, Porky's wrong as usual. Goodison Park was built in 1892 and not there in 1878. So it's not much of a cathedral, I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It was 1878. We were in Anfield, actually. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, when the two clubs uh, split, well, we uh, well, refused to pay extra out. rent to the landlord of the pub who owned the uh, field. Oh, well, there you yeah. go. Uh, Leather Barrow yeah. says, Stadiums should integrate with the community surrounding it. No community plus no fans equals no club. Mm. Absolutely. Right, mm. Laura says Porky's lost the plot. He's talking so much nonsense this morning. And uh, oh, Leatherborough adds Millwall's land yeah. is valuable for property development. Mm. So why can't they incorporate the stadium like AC Milan's new stadium did, or like uh, you mm. know, QPR's plan was to do that? Yeah, as was, yeah as but these was, plans as, never really work as was, out. Do as they? was Tottenham's plan to do that as well? They're no, Tottenham really are staying in, in White Hart Lane mm. effectively, mm. but they're rebuilding the whole area so that it's going to be a beautiful the, sort the, of you, they, know, uh, you know shopping centre. There's going to be homes there. They seem to have done a very good job, but without uh, so no, it can mm, be done. Well, it can't be done unless you've got vast um, uh, resources like Spurs have and will have. I mean, Millwall are, let's face it, they're a pretty insignificant football club. That's wrong. That's well, they, no, they are in global terms. I'm not, I'm not decrying them. I'm not saying that they're not important to people around Millwall. But all I'm saying well, is... Well, you're going to say the same about Charlton, and you're going to say the same about Leighton Orient. You can't, Orient live, in you can't yeah, live in the yeah, past but, forever. You can't live in the past forever. You've got to must, move on. But surely some of these clubs are, are owed protection by uh, the council, rather than you know, to be preyed upon you by can't, the council. You can't, you can't prey on sentiment. Imagine if, um, you know, for instance, imagine if, I don't know, say, ooh, think of the worst ground that uh, had to be knocked down before they built a new one on it. Say, Roker Goodison Park. Park. No, Roker Park. Imagine, imagine if they were still in Roker Park today. Well, be crumbling. Funnily enough, we've got a Sunderland fan to talk to, Stephen. Oh, uh, okay. He can tell us his view. Stephen, yeah. a very good morning to you. Good uh, morning, are you all right, uh, Michael? Yeah, very well, now, thank you. Now, um, are, you, uh, are you in agreement with Porky that you're glad yeah. they knocked down Roker Park? No, not really. Uh, Port was my first ground. I can still, I can still remember my first game. It was against Crystal Palace on a Tuesday night. The floodlights, the smell, the smell of alcohol off the old men. Yeah. Getting, pa- getting passed towards the front in the four wheel end because that's what happened with all the kids in them days. And built by I, uh, the same guy who built Goodison Park. Yeah, that's correct. That's yep. correct. Yeah. Old Archie. That's the, that's Archie Leach. That's the only thing I want to agree on with you today, Michael. That's the only thing I want to agree on with you today. Yeah. Apart from that. Yeah. But to be honest, mate, I think you've lost in touch with reality. No, I haven't. He spends too much time in the boardroom, Stephen. Speak first, Michael. Let me speak. speak yeah, let him first. speak, you, Porky. Yeah, come on, you speak. You can have your say, right? Come I want to get about a couple of minutes, right? Yeah, go on, let speak. Let me have all my say, right? So, uh, Millwall, to begin with, if they leave their club, right, and move to Kent. How many of the Millwall fans can afford to travel to Kent? Then you've got the extra travel time. Yeah. And all these new fans, who's going to know about the heritage of Millwall? Hardly none of them. Not you much heritage, though, is there? There's not much heritage well, that's there. That's not for you to say. Well, it's not. 
It's not. Of course there is. Of course there is. I mean, and you know, you, 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 I tell you, you what, the only heritage they would take would be the Black Museum. You know, with a few coshes and totally all that kind of stuff. It's very unfair. You're totally, out of, you're absolutely totally out of touch. You don't think working class exists either. I'm a working class, mate. I work well, I'm working class. Work. I'm working class. You said the working class didn't exist anymore. Not in the old form. Of course it does. At the end of the day... The Elf Garnet working class doesn't exist anymore. That's gone. Of course it does, because if I, if I have two weeks off work without pay, yeah. I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Is that not working class? Do you know what I the problem is, Stephen? Let me finish, let me finish. Let yeah, me go finish. on, let me finish, finish Stephen. I got to work. not finished yet. I got to work at three o'clock on a Monday morning, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't get home until Friday, right? I missed my family all week. That's the only thing what I've got over. I'm the same. Here, yeah. Where were you, you, you working? Millwall? You'll never know, Mike Perry, right? Hey? The feeling of a cuddle off a kid when you get back on a Friday off your child. That's, that's a bit low. That's a bit low, Stephen. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the only thing I've got off you, mate. That's the only I don't know thing what I've sort of a you. job you've got, Steve, but if I yeah, get another one, mate, honestly, it doesn't no, seem to suit I, I, you. Yeah, you need to get a proper. You need to. Hey? Do you know the problem you. with this guy, right? If he came to Bermondsey, yeah. where yeah. I live, right, he would meet some real working class Millwall fans and Ooh. he would know what working class football would. fans yeah. are all about. You don't find them down in Sutton, Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, travelling in and out on first class. You don't find them. Steve living in the North East. You're 62 years old as well. You're 62 years old and you was born in L- L- December 1954. <laughs> living in the North East, Steve. You think, what, what, you think what, what, there's a load of people yeah, like Alf Garnet wandering around in Millwall? Calling their wives the silly old moo. To come and back and that's, a, that's, that's, that's a bit libelous. I haven't, I haven't got round to that yet, yeah. to be honest. Mm. But I won't talk about that. We won't get into that. But honestly, yeah. Porky, you're totally out of touch with Millwall fans. You haven't got a clue because you've All got right. a beautiful house. Yes. You've got millions of pounds, and you just haven't got a clue yeah. what the working class is. Exactly. Is well, look, right. I'm only like well any said. other Joe. Well so. said, Stephen. Absolutely well said. He's got you down in a nutshell, that guy. Uh, let's talk to Dan, who's a yeah. West Ham fan uh, from mm. Torquay, funnily enough. Dan, mm. a very good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, you, you got a long way to travel for a home game, haven't you? I'm, I'm, tra- I'm actually in Southampton. Today, oh, um, well, well, yeah. so, but my thing is obviously I, I am a West Ham fan and West Ham seed to go. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, as as I've grown up, I hate Mill with a passion. But the thing I'd hate more yeah. is to see them get moved to Kent. In right. the day, clubs like mm-hmm. Millwall, mm-hmm. they're, they're communities. Yeah. They're not franchises that just can be moved. Like, oh, see, look at look at Wimbledon, look at AFC Wimbledon. Yeah. Well, Wimbledon as a, as the baby, they got Shaft and they got Mitchell and played on. They've got no heritage there. Yeah. There's nothing worse. But Wim- well, I mean, There's Wimbledon was a ramshackle ground. It was a ramshackle yeah. ground. But to Wimbledon, gra- but to and Wimbledon it was a ramshackle yeah, club, but it was, really. But it was Wimbledon, though. It was their ground. It was their yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For example, the Bell. You know, these soulless... The Dell, shocking the ground, was, shocking ground. That needed knocking ground. down, I'm telling you. Would you mind letting the people speak? Mm, mm. You're an absolute, absolute joke, Mr. Perry. You're the sort of person, as you said, who wants dogs to speak, put bleeding, you know, rear-view mirrors on horses. Yeah. You don't yeah. know what you're talking about all of the yeah. time. Millwall, I, I can't stand them. Yeah, OK. I to see them move okay. to That's a joke. OK, well, listen, mate, we do appreciate your uh, contribution to the show. Thank you very much indeed, and good luck in following your club as and when you do. Thank you so much. That's a no problem at all, Dan. Thank pleasure. you for calling. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike Graham, for talking about the Millwall and mm. the issue of how stupid Lewisham Council have been. Yeah. Says CR. Hashtag yeah. Bermondsey. Hashtag Defend the Den. Because mm. you've got to do it. Mm. Here's, how about this from uh, Jamie? He says, I'm a yeah. Sheffield United fan uh, and you have no, I have no affiliation to Millwall, but you're showing total rec- lack of respect to people's football club, yeah. uh, he says. And Porky says, uh, says Tom, is starring his own Eastie style Who Done It. Yeah. Lots of suspects if he gets bumped off. Hull citizens, Bono fans, Millwall fans, yeah. uh, uh, and very possibly Vinny uh, Jones as well. Well, I tell you what, I say to the Sheffield United fan, the Sheffield United fans are so, you know, dedicated to their ground. Well, don't start having about, a go at them now. For about 60 years, they tolerated a ground with only three sides. Mm. How can, you, how can you do that? What, you mean a, a stadium with only three yeah, sides? Yeah. Well, lots of places have only got three sides. Rubbish. I mean, you go to a lot of rugby games and you can see out, the, uh, out of maybe all four sides. I'm sorry, mate, but I'm talking about football grounds. Yeah. And Sheffield United was the only ground in the world that only had three sides. Well, you can see out the side of Everton's ground, The other ground, side can't of it you? was a cricket ground. Can you not see out the hey? side of Everton's ground at some point? No, of course you can't. Can you not see through one of the gaps? No, can't. Sure? No, you can't. No, yeah. no. no. There's a church in, in one corner and all the others are joined up. A church? Yes. Well, so you can see through there, can't you? No. You can what see over it, you can see on the roof. People used to sit on the roof and watch the uh, Everton Liverpool derbies because they right? couldn't get into the ground. Yeah. yeah. And what yeah. do you think of those people? Scumbags, right? Because they didn't pay Definitely the ticket not. to get in. Definitely and they're not. not allowed in the boardroom. Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. People. You are unbelievable. The biggest hypocrite I think I've ever met in no, all of my years not of me. working in any business that I've ever been working in. I'm a working class man.
Right, now then, here we are. You talk, you are listening to the two mics, of course. You're on Talk Sport. You're listening to Talk Sport. And I am... Uh, who are you? Who I'm, are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> I am Mike Parry here. By the way, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's at I-R-O-M-G. Yes, and mine is Mike Parry. Now then, I want to tell you this. We're with Wix. Get your home nice and cosy this winter. 30% off all single-panel universal radiators. Get down there quick. Yeah, well done. I was wondering you could get around to <laughs> yes, that. Yes, that's right, yes. Uh, anyway, how about this from Cotty? Says, Steve has to be the greatest caller in the two mics history. History. Indeed. Uh, Andy says, I'd move back to Roker Park in a heartbeat. Proper football stadium with fans close to the pitch and yeah. great atmosphere. Stadium of Light, he says, is soulless. Yeah. Patrick says, don't mention the gaps either side of Park End at Goodison, Porky. Mm. GP mm. is not a cathedral. Mm. It's a tired old lady. Well, and, uh, Chris says this. So you're wrong about that as well. No, I'm not. You're probably from the boardroom. No, you can't see I'm the not. gaps, I'm can not. you? I'm not. You probably can't see the from the boardroom, can you? Uh, you know, as you're wafting the sort of smoked salmon towards yourself. <laughs> uh, listen, I do not go into the boardroom at Goodison Park. Well, it just so happens that my seat is close. Band. to the director's oh, no, box. Really? That's, that's, oh, really? What a fit. coincidence. Well, you know... Is that because that's where you asked for it to be? That's just the way it goes, mate. Uh, Chris says this. Oxford United's ground was built with three sides. It's still the same today. Right, is it? So, and Bally says that as well. Used to be owned by uh, Robert Maxwell. Uh, indeed. Uh, Mr. Publisher, an MP who yeah. fell off his boat and uh, drowned. He did indeed, yeah. shortly after I interviewed him, funnily <laughs> enough. Exactly, that's um, right. Although, yeah. I'm not Threw saying the two off, events in that were in any way connected. Mm. Uh, classic mm. Porky, says Mr Chilly. Yesterday he says Vinnie Jones was the worst player to play mm. in the Premier mm. League. Today he says Wimbledon were a rubbish team. Uh, I didn't say that. I said it was a rubbish ground, and it was. The only way you could get to your seat at the old plough lane was to go through a pub or a nightclub, which were both attached to the Wimbledon ground. Mm. Uh, and I used to have a sort of executive seat and uh, whenever Everton played there, and I used to, you, have, you used to have to go in through the nightclub to get there. Is that right? And, and consequently, you had a, two or three drinks on the way to your seat. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people like are that. saying you better be careful on your way home, is all, that, is all I can say. I don't really? want to say too oh, much. Oh, threats now, is it, eh? Well, so oh, I thought me, we had free speech in this country. Yeah, well, we do have free mm. speech in this mm. country, more or less. Listen, t- free speech is one Although, thing. Although, free dress code, possibly not. I was about to say, free mm. movement of people wearing their pyjamas yeah. is simply not on. Why not? If I'd have been a police officer and I saw those two well, women... luckily you're not a police officer. Two women walking around a supermarket in Salford, where we yes, once did a live it, show. It was at 10am in the Salford morning, was it? Salford Keys, yeah, which... Uh, no, is it, is it, was it 10 Was it 10am or was it 10pm? I thought it was 10pm, actually, but I'm, I'm going to double-check that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's outrageous. I mean, absolutely outrageous. Well, what's it got to do with you, what people wear? Well, I, I, excuse me, but if I was a policeman, I'd have, I'd have approached both these women. Yeah, I've got what? the details here. And done what? Salford on Tuesday evening. Salford. So, <coughs> Salford. Salford. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll solve it. I would approach them and I would say, if you do not leave this supermarket now, go home, put some proper clothing on, I'm arresting you... For what? For, uh, for being uh, uh, contrary... contrary to common decency. Contrary, contrary to, common to common decency. That is absolute utter nonsense. No, it's not. No, it's not. As many people have what, you, pointed out... You think that's good? You I, think it's well, good to see women walking to around be honest, a supermarket? I, have only, I, I think there's only one dress code that is required yes. and should be required in a supermarket, that you must wear shoes mm. uh, and you must wear a top. Yeah. But other than that, you know, like, I don't want to see people walking in their strip to the waist in the summer yeah. because I think that's probably unhygienic. Because flakes of skin fall off their well, body onto the food. I don't wish to be that graphic about it. Right. But as to what they wear, <laughs> I don't think it's anybody's business. I mean, for example, the guy who took the pictures of them and put mm. them out on uh, on Twitter yes. and Facebook yes. got a huge barrage of abuse from people who mm. said, why don't you mind your own business? Well, What's excuse me. With you? Excuse me. If these so women... you're a typical sort of, you know, uh, yeah. neck curtain twitching, no, I'm not. N- you know, busybody. No, I'm not. What people wear to the, to the shops is nothing, nothing to do with you. Quite frankly, if I was yeah. a member of the fashion police, I'd yeah. arrest you every day for those ridiculous shoes you wear. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I, I wear those shoes because it the helps ones with... The lifts in them. It helps with my sciatica problem, <laughs> which is brought on by, you know, the fact that only one third of my heart works. Yeah. Everybody knows Absolute that. Absolute rubbish. Now, what I was going to say well, is... Well, that doesn't mean you have to have Velcro on them. Uh, I haven't got any Velcro on any shoes, so... Well, have you got any laces on them? Yeah, I've got laces, yeah. Are you sure? See? Laces. My God, yeah. you've got laces. Yeah. That's I haven't got any Velcro. Now then, what I was going to say is, so it's seven o'clock in the evening, these yeah. women are walking round. That means um, almost certainly that they haven't changed out of those pyjamas and dressing gowns all day. That means that You don't know that. Well, what, do you think they got dressed in pyjamas and dressing gowns before they went out shopping? Some people put pyjamas on when they get home from work because they feel more comfortable in them. And to be honest, a lot of pyjamas mm. that you can now buy are very similar to what you would call leisure wear, you know, like shell yes. suits that people used to wear. You yes. might as well say people are not allowed to walk around wearing shell suits. Well, hang on, no. You see, my reading of this is if these women have been in pyjamas and dressing gowns all day, then yeah. they haven't washed. And if they well, haven't washed, they are then a liability to public health. Well, and for, for that reason, well, should have been thrown out listen, of this supermarket. You have no idea whether everyone in this office has had a wash today, have you? Well, they're not wearing pyjamas and dressing gowns, so they're not carrying the, you know, the, well, they might the have remnants slept in their of last night's sleep. Have you never slept with in them? your clothes? Never. Never? Never. Well, never. what do you sleep in? I, well, I sleep in, you know, like sleepwear. You sleepwear? know what I mean? Sleepwear? Like yeah. what? 
Well, I'm not going to tell do you, you that because I mean, don't be ridiculous. I <laughs> you mean, don't wear pajamas. Well, I do wear some wear formal nice pajamas. No, no, some no, no. form of pajamas. Oh yes, yes. Like what? Well, what I, sort of we're not pajamas. getting into that. What no, do you I, sleep in? I don't sleep in anything. Right, well, I there sleep you go. Naked. God, How about that? God. oh, uh, that's a sick <laughs> bag, Alice. Uh, 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 uh. He sleeps with nothing on. Uh, uh, uh. What's wrong with that? Excuse me. What is wrong with that? What's um, wrong with you? What I'm saying is, what, what do you I'm... wear then? What? What do you wear? I wear. I'm not going to tell you what I wear. Why not? It's, because it's of no interest no. to the, our you millions of listeners. You're getting all shy about no, your no. clothes. I'm not getting shy about I bet my clothes. You wear a nightshirt, don't you? I do not wear a nightshirt. Like wee Willy Winky with his gaslight. No. No, nope, nosing about me. to see who's messing Got around in the of building. A bad cold, by the way, but I'm fighting yeah. it, folks. Um, what I'm saying is, do you wear um, like button-up pajamas? No, I don't, because you know why? why? I tried those once, and they they kind of strangle you in the middle of the night, you know, as you move around. So I don't wear them. Right. Um, so no. what? You wear sort of lycra or something? No, I don't. A t-shirt sometimes. A t-shirt and uh, boxers. Two mics t-shirt. T- yeah, yes, yes, sometimes. Yeah, and, and boxers. Uh, boxers. Yes, yeah. That's right. That's what I feel comfortable in. That's not a very good um, image. But either, anyway, look, these two ladies, right? Yeah. Will be identified today because the. Have you got something against out. women wearing pajamas? Well, I don't think anybody should wear pajamas in public. I think it's disgusting. No, but I mean just generally. What, what, do, you, what do you think of pajamas generally? What do I think of pajamas? Yeah. I think it's up to the individual what he wants to wear well, in exactly. bed. Well, exactly. It's absolutely no problem. Exactly. But but they're not they're in bed. They're suit. walking around the supermarket. Yeah, well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. They are By effectively. The way, they, I mean, if you look at them, yeah. and you have to look very carefully mm. before you realise that they're actually wearing pajamas because yeah. they could be wearing, to all intents and purposes, like I said, the no. sort of leisure wear that people no. wear when they got a plane. No, they couldn't. Now the other thing is the shoes, right? Now it is disgusting to come out of your house in your domestic slippers, which are maybe they're outdoor slippers, which are meant for uh, carpets and maybe your polished floors and all that. You go into the street, you're walking on paving stones, which have the filth of a common street <laughs> uh, ingrained in them. What do you like? <laughs> I love this tweet. Uh, yeah, from, yeah. From Danny, who says, Mike Parry is all for arresting people for the way they dress now. He's completely lost the plot. No, I'm, I'm telling you that I think this is disgusting. You then go back in your house, you carry all the filth off the pavements into your house, you then. Um, you, you, you then. Lay that all over your carpets and your curtains. Well, maybe and, and they've got indoor and outdoor cushions. slippers like you have. I have got indoor and outdoor slippers, That's but most I mean. people don't have indoor and outdoor slippers. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that these women don't have indoor and outdoor slippers. I don't know what you they get so worked like, up about. They don't like they have to. I, I think it's disgusting. So would you approach women in a supermarket dressed like that and tell them to go home? No, but I would go to the manager and say, I'm not coming here again to shop because I will not shop in a supermarket where women come in, in their pajamas after having not changed all day. Well, considering I'm the last sorry, time I'm you leaving. probably saw a woman in her pajamas, I think you'd be grateful if you just follow them around. That, that is a Smutty, tatty <laughs> little aside, Not which, at all. which will do you no good in the eyes of our more intelligent listeners, I'm and not, that's ninety nine percent of our listeners, I'm, by the way. I'm not. Uh, I'm not attempting to uh, do myself any good in the eyes of the listeners. Mm. Unlike you, I'm mm. not in a constant popularity contest. So, what do you think about it? I don't think it matters. I well, mean, I if, think if, for example, if for example they were walking around in you know mm. a baby doll nighties mm. or something and causing a stir yes. or exposing uh, you know more flesh than they should do, like mm. if they were wearing a bathing suit or something like yeah. that, then I think you might have an argument, but they are, like, to, to be honest, when I saw the picture, I had to look very closely yeah. to even realise they were wearing pyjamas. Well, I tell you something. Because they could be wearing any sort of leisure wear, as I've told you. Once we start accepting this sort of behaviour, then I'm afraid civilization, as we know it is beginning to break down. And uh, Civilization is breaking down? Well, because I, a couple I, of women went shopping in their pyjamas. Have you gone it, completely it, it, no, bonkers? it's disgusting. I, I don't know how it's it not. can be allowed. It, absolutely not. Uh, Dan if I was the shop manager, by the way, if I was shop manager, no. I, I would I would have to say, I'm sorry, I've got to well, ask you to leave. Tesco's did, uh, I think, issue a statement on this, didn't yeah. they? Because they said yeah. that they had taken the... Because uh, the guy complained to them, mm-hmm. I think, on Twitter, and he got a response, didn't he? Yes. Have you got that right, there? Right, Tesco said... Uh, Tesco, which seven years ago banned pyjama wearers from a store in Cardiff, said many of our customers have told us that they feel uncomfortable when they see other shoppers wearing unsuitable clothing. Mm. Although we don't have a formal dress code, we rely on our management team to use their discretion. So they say it's up to the individual, OK? Right. So each shop can make its own rules. Yes, it looks like it, yeah. yeah. Well, mm. maybe you should go round to all your local shops and make sure that they've instigated this rule for fear that, you know, you might come up, come up, come up against somebody wearing pyjamas by accident. If I, if I walked in and they were in jail, I'd walk out. I, I would. I mean, look. Well, that's fine. You but have don't, to take a point of principle yeah, on this. That's fine. But that's your belief and that's your business. Yes. And you do whatever you want. Don't try and impose your will on everybody else. Though. No, I'm not going to. You what know, I'm saying if is... If you I, don't like it, just walk out. Simple. Have I said that I think they should close down the supermarket? You said they should have be I arrested. Said I think they should be, well, I think they should be arrested for, for, for breaching for, common decency. For breaching common decency. Breaching common decency. Mad? Yeah, no, I haven't. If I go into a public house or restaurant and I discover there's no soap in the bathrooms, right... 
I immediately summon the manager mm. and I tell oh, him... You've already been banned from a place, haven't you? No, I haven't. Yes, I refused have. to go into one. Because no, you've been it banned ha- from there. No, it happened. T- I have not the been guy banned. The guy told you not to come back, didn't no, he? No, he did not. Uh, in, twice in two days I went in and there was no soap. I asked no. him to replace well, just it. just mind your own business. No, 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 because it's a, it's, a, it's a public decency and a health and safety issue. Take your own and soap. And on the second day... Why don't you just take your own soap? On, on, don't be ridiculous. Who walks around with their own soap in their pocket? Well, because you're one of these guys that's got all sorts of weird sort of, you know, stuff that you do. And on the second day, I... I, so I went the time, by the way. I summoned the manager and I said, on two consecutive days, yeah. I've asked you to put soap I in your bathroom. Was delighted with you, and, wasn't and you haven't. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not using your premises again. Yeah. And he was stunned and shocked. Yeah, I'm and, sure he was very uh, grateful. And I then left. I'm, very, I'm sure he was I very glad tweeted, to see the back I then of you. tweeted out with the handle of, um, of the pub and said, I'm not going there again really? because I think it's disgusting. Dan yeah. the Gunner says this every time I see a picture of Porky, he looks like he's wearing pyjamas. Oh, that's about right. right. Yeah. yeah, but you see, you, you yeah, see you're turning arrested. into a joke because you know you've lost the argument. What argument? You've completely lost well, the we're argument. We're not having an argument. Well, you want to what tolerate about? You want to tolerate women walking around in I their pyjamas doing the shopping. I don't, I don't mind what they wear. Imagine if their hair fell off the dressing gown into what? into the potatoes and then somebody else their comes hair. along. Yeah. Well, they could fall off no matter what they're wearing. No, no, it couldn't. Well, no. do you want to wearing hair nets now when they go in? Uh, well, if they wear the pajamas, I think they should. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. Complete plank. I do. I'm sorry, but you know as well as I do, if you've been wearing your pajamas for 24 hours, I don't have pajamas. I've told the you the remnants of the I don't wear pajamas. Of the you know, so the you do wear hair, pajamas. Skin and all. I've just told you I don't. How many times are you going to ask and, and, well, and well, let you me just repeat said, this question? You know what it's like when you wear pajamas for days on end. Well, I know what other people are look like when they wear pajamas <laughs> days on end because you know <laughs> I've had the misfortune so. to you know to at one time you know as a student all that kind of stuff oh, yeah. these uh, student. filthy individual toe rags. <laughs> Go around in their pajamas all day long, huh? Well, you're living in like the young one's house. No, no. We've got uh, a couple of callers to take, uh, Mr. Yes. Parry. But first, let me read you a few uh, tweets yeah, on okay. the subject of pajamas. Yeah, Billy yeah, the Everton yeah. fan says, "There's a message in our dentist that says nobody will be treated if they're wearing pajamas." Mm. How bizarre is that? Yeah, it's uh, absolutely bizarre. I mean, it must be one of those neighbourhoods where maybe the dentist is just a terraced house next to other terraced houses or something like that. You know what oh, I mean? Well, clearly, I can't imagine lot... anybody would go out and walk. Well, obviously, people know, do two miles to the de- to the well, dentist in the pajamas. Mike uh, should come to West Belfast. Women do this on a daily basis. It's considered normal, says Mickey. Well, and uh, and Jolly says that's yeah. not just button-up PJs that will be mm. strangling you mm. in the night. Soon it will be Vinnie Jones and half of Millwall. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> Somebody in Tadanti has sent me the video clip from the Vinnie Jones film, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking oh, Barrels, yeah. and said, this is Vinnie Jones mm. looking at Mike Perry, and yeah. then repeat the scene of him smashing a door on somebody's head repeatedly. <laughs> I'll tell rather, you what you should look rather at. harsh. You should look at Vinnie's actual Twitter account, yes. because what he's got there is that great tackle he made on Eric Cantona. Oh, right, and OK. He sent him fly, yeah. flying up into the air. Yeah. Uh, but that was uh, many, many years ago. Let's Indeed. talk to Steve, mm. uh, who's a wolf fan of Wolverhampton. Hello, Steve. How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, very yeah. well, mate. What would you yeah, like to hello, say Steve. about the pyjamas issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's getting pretty stupid, to be fair. I mean, if you want to wear pyjamas in your shopping store or whatever, mm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't go out in my pyjamas in the shopping store. Have you got pyjamas then, have you? Oh, I've got pyjamas. I've got Superman and Spider-Man pyjamas, yeah, yeah, Superman yeah. pyjamas. How old are you, yeah, Steve? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 26 on Wednesday. 26 mm. on mm. Wednesday? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Have you got any yeah, other yeah. superhero pyjamas? I've got a pair of Batman pyjamas as well. Batman like pyjamas. Yeah, I think you're yeah, winding yeah. us up here, Steve. But anyway, listen, what's the point you're making here is that it's not well, acceptable, is it? Well, no, no, no. My issue is uh, I don't mind. If I go and see... So I work in retail. If somebody comes into my store and wears pyjamas to wear yeah. pyjamas, it will bother me. My, my, what I'm saying is my point is if you go, over to, you go over to Spain or you go over to Portugal, you see people walking in with their T-shirts on. Nothing gets said. Yeah. So why, why, why is it a big issue over here? If people want to wear because that's the continent store, it. and it's Mediterranean and it's de well, rigueur for that part of the world. It is not de rigueur to go well, around... I think it's going without, a lot more than you know. No, it's not. Without a T-shirt on in parts of Stockbroker Belt Surrey or the northwest of England or the Lake District or, or Northumberland Street in Newcastle. We just don't do it in this country. We don't have the climate and we don't have the culture. You're wrong, it. actually. In the summer, loads of people walk around with no shirt on. Well, they're I'm disgusting. Saying. They shouldn't be allowed in the shops, though. What do you think of that, Steve? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. If you don't want to go in with, with the shirts on over here, that's fair enough. I totally understand. It's a different climate as well altogether. Mm, mm. But you've got people that are going out in nightclubs now that go out in onesies. Yeah. You know, it's exactly, it's right. exactly the same situation. Yeah, well, anybody in a onesie's a weirdo. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with onesies. I bet Steve's got a onesie. Have you got a Superman onesie, Steve? I haven't indeed. I haven't. I've got a monkey onesie. You've got a monkey onesie? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, are you all right, Steve? You know, I mean, if you don't mind me asking. 
Huh? I'm not. I'm not. T- uh, I'm not too bad. I like to go to the Wolves games in my onesie sometimes as well. Oh, I'm do you? That. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're not the mascot by any chance, are you? Uh, I wish I was, mate. I yeah. Wish I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, yeah. Steve. Thank okay, you very Steve, much. Thank indeed. you very much. Uh, here's one from John. He says mm-hmm. Tesco's in Allower put a notice up two years ago. Customers mm. entering the store wearing nightwear uh, will be declined. Yeah. He's actually said nightmare, but I think he means nightwear. I've uh, got one here, and it says, "Imagine being in a restaurant full of people." This is from Glyn yeah. in Oldham. Thank you. Imagine being in a restaurant full of people dressed in pajamas while you're suited and booted um, with the rest of the uh, clientele. How wrong would that be? Now, I tell you what that reminds me of. Chris Evans. Well, is he saying that, therefore, if you were dressed incorrectly in a suit, you would feel uh, weird? No, no, no. No, no. If you were dressed in a suit and it's quite a formal restaurant, somebody else turned up in their pyjamas, it'd make you feel very uncomfortable. he's saying everybody else, though. No, he's not. No, honestly, he's saying if if, 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 uh, if, if it was just you. But anyway, look, the point I want to make is this. Um, Chris Evans, who is well known to you and I, the same business and very successful at what he does. Yeah. (coughs) Excuse me. He's had a very successful a bit life. More successful than us, I'd say. Uh, yes, I would say so yeah. as well. Um, I remember him uh, writing Slightly. once that he, he was in a hotel. I think it was in London, and mm. you know they've been doing some filming about something or making some program, and. He rang around all the other rooms of the people he was with and said, why don't we go down for breakfast in these lovely, white, fluffy dressing gowns? Oh, yeah. Which, you well, know... yeah, I mean, if you go to a lot of hotels, yeah. especially spa hotels, yeah. people walk around in those all the time. <laughs> Excuse me, this is not a spa hotel. Mm. So he gets down to the uh, restaurant where breakfast is being served, and the maitre d' flatly refused and mm. said, no, 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 no. Maitre d'? The maitre d'. He said, no, 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 no sir, I'm sorry, you cannot come here dressed in these dressing gowns. Right. This is this is bedroom wear only. Yeah. You must um, formalise yourself and put some clothes on. I can't, mm. and, and anyway, uh, Chris was so upset, he left the hotel I've, I mean, and took everybody in, with him. I've been in hotels where you wear a robe and you get in the lift, you go down to the spa. Yeah, I've done that. Ra- have you? I have, yeah. When was the last time you were in a spa hotel? Um, in... The Shangri-La in Singapore. How many um, years ago was that? Well, a few years ago. And what we used to do is, used to go down in the lift, as you quite rightly say, Wait. to the swimming pool area. Well, you know, people, the person I was with. Who were you and, with? Well, I can't tell you that. And um, well, you went on your own. No, I didn't actually. Did you? Um, well, what did this person make of it when you got there and said, "Excuse me, darling, yeah. I'm just going to sit at the desk for a while and send a load of letters to all my enemies uh, with Mr. Parry's name on the top of the notepaper." I've told you that story. Yes, I? you have. Yeah, which I, well, I would have thought it's something only, you would do. The only hotel if you were the, in a hotel room with a young woman. It's the only hotel in the world where the room was called suite and yes, not I've room. Already, yes, I've already heard and, the story. And 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 the notepaper in the in the leather patch yeah. pouch on the on the side yes, table. Yes, told all this. Said, we know about this. Uh, Michael A. Parry, yeah. suite. Uh, three four one, yeah. the Shangri La Hotel, yeah. Singapore. Yes, yes, I know all that. So I sent the, well, I sent yeah, that out time, to yeah, but you said you sent them all out to your I, enemies. I, I did. Numbers yeah. about three hundred. I did. I, everybody I didn't yeah. like, I sent them a quick note saying, "Hi, how well, are you how doing?" How long did that take? Um, that was just and a passing thing. What was your thing. companion doing while you were doing that? <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, we go down to what the. What do you mean anyway? We go down to the spa. You haven't answered the question. Because I'm telling you the spa story in the in the fluffy robes, right? And you're absolutely right. Sat there all afternoon while. Did you have a treatment? No, no, there was a free drinks trolley, and uh, that's the only reason I went there. In the came, spa? Yeah, it came around every ten minutes, yeah. Well, so, what did you do? Just sit there? Uh, reading English newspapers, which I'd had flown over, so I could keep in touch with what you was going on. such rubbish. No, I don't. You expect anyone to believe any of this? Yeah, I do, yeah. Why, why, why shouldn't I? Well, because that's exactly one, what you I did. didn't have uh, papers flown over specially. In Singapore, they have English map papers. Well, they were there for, you know, my, my so use. So you didn't have them flown over, they, especially, they were, did you? They, they were brought into the hotel for my use, OK? Rubbish. Because I demanded that I oh, wanted right, them. because the Changri line in Singapore wouldn't have them. Now, the point is that you could wear your fluffy robes in the spa yep. and in the um, area around the swimming pool, um, but you couldn't wear them in the gymnasium and you certainly couldn't wear them in the bar the or restaurant areas. Yeah. What gymnasium? It was a gymnasium, What, did it have, like, a rope in it? Ladders? No, 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 it had, like... You um, mean the gym? Well, you know, it's not a gymnasium, like, like is where it? bike machines were and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Treadmills, treadmills. It's a gym. Yeah, well, gym is it's a, not a gymnasium. It's, gym is a shortened word yes. for gymnasium. But it's not the same thing. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, sometimes I despair talking. Well, to I you, have so to pick really you up do. on all the details because no, you, you make it up as you go all. along. No, I don't. Because every time you tell a story, it gets different. The last time you told me the story, you're on your own. Now you're with somebody. Well, I was kind of on my own in that we flew on the same plane, but did not sit, sit next to each other. If you see what I mean? Hey. Yeah. Well, so this is somebody you met on a plane. No. Somebody that... Um, Who was it, then? I can't tell you, I'm sorry. What do you mean? Is it somebody I'm, I know? Uh, it may be somebody. Was it Carol Malone, know. was it? No, it was not Carol Malone, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I completely agree with Mike Parry. Miss Malone, who used to be a columnist in a newspaper. That's the one. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with Mike Parry, says mm. Julia. I love PJs, but would never be seen outside the house in them. Exactly. Hashtag very uncouth. 
Exactly. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I totally agree with that. Mm. You shouldn't do it. Wayne says, crikey, how many Red Bulls has Porky had this morning? No, I haven't had any. Um, right, it and, says... Uh, Matt says, yikes, did Porky's other brain cell die of loneliness at yesterday's AGM? The tripe he's talking today is unnerving. Uh, n- Don't not... talk much about the AGM, actually. Not at all. Tommy says, whilst in Adelaide for Ashes a few years ago, there was a sign in the hotel bar that said, no bar service to patrons wearing pyjamas. Mm. And that, I think, is a mark of a civilised uh, yeah. society. But does it not a show... A civilised country, a civilised nation. Yeah, hang on, does it not prove, though, that there's an awful lot of this going on. The more we hear about people having to put signs up, it must mean that they're having to put signs up because lots of people are wearing pyjamas outside. Well, I'm sorry. I, mean, I'm I, mean... not, I, I wouldn't do it, and I'm not condoning no. it necessarily, but no. I don't. I think it's very un, un, sort of charitable mm-hmm. of you to start attacking people for doing it yes. and, and, and saying that they shouldn't be allowed to. I mean, you don't want to live in a place like North Korea where you'd have to told what to wear when you go out every day. No, well, no, but, I mean, there are standard codes of dress and you should adhere to them in a civilised society. Paul here has sent... And you see, once again, you've been planting all sorts of nefarious ideas into Not the minds all. of our listeners. Guess what Paul says? Incorrect. Paul says, I've just realised why Porky wants Millwall's ground knocked down. He spotted some red tiles on the roof which he needs to complete the uh, roof development on his own property. I mean, you see, yeah. honestly, well, honestly. I mean, actually, there was one earlier that said that a, a, mm. a mate of his, uh, yeah. not far away from here, had mm. actually taken a load of towels off a roof mm. and was going to give them to you until you started attacking Millwall. What? Uh, because, of course, uh, now he was a Millwall fan, he's not going to give them to you. Will in Chester says this, yes. although I wouldn't walk around a city centre in my gym jams, mm. I regularly pop to the mm. village shop in my slippers for milk and chocolate, etc., uh, well, during and, an ad break. In that case, you're impregnating the soles of your slippers with the filth of the street and the pavement and then walking it back into your own house. I don't know how people can do that. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. I've got a great one here from Daniel. He says, I think yes. Porky needs to go back to that hotel and pick up another notebook or two for all the enemies he's made this week. What? Uh, no, 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 no. Come on. This is the land of free speech. You know, I'm not going to be intimidated by people threatening to dunch my teeth in because uh, I happen to express a particular point of view. Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh, Jonesy says, I totally mm. agree with Mike Parry. It mm. just shows a lack of decency, laziness, ill hygiene and zero self-respect. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly how I How about this one from it. Danny, who calls yeah. us planks, but I think he's a bit of a plank himself. Right. Uh, he says, any chance you two can talk about sport as you're mm-hmm. working for talk sport yeah. and not loose women? Oh, really? Well, I'll tell you what, Danny, uh, if you actually had any uh, nouse or brains, you would have heard us talking about Millwall for, uh, for quarter. about the first hour and yeah. a half of the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And much else besides. Mm. And mm. the FA Cup. And of course, we We'll be talking about uh, the FA Cup coming up uh, in the final hour of, of the show. Will, uh, because we've got uh, live coverage tonight. Commentary, commentary tonight. West Ham against Manchester City. We've got eight games as well, by the way, over the whole I know, weekend. It's incredible. Are we talking to my uh, my singing pal, Matt Holland? Matt Holland, yes. yes He's still traumatised from the time you sang uh, Maggie May Maggie in his May. ear yeah. with your arm around him at yeah. the Christmas party a couple of years ago. Everybody else loved it. Absolutely um, shocking. Listen, you just mentioned Chester there for some reason. What was it you mentioned Chester for? Uh, because the guy who said that he goes out in his slippers oh, to that's the local right, yeah. shop is yeah. from Chester. From Chester, okay, yeah. Do you know what? Your hometown. Town, right? In my hometown, that's right. Um, the top ten attractions in this country that you pay to visit yes. are mm. the Tower of London, yeah. Westminster Abbey, right. Royal Botanical Gardens Kew and St yeah. Paul's Cathedral, yes. which, of course, are massive landmarks in Indeed. London, our capital city. Well, I suppose Kew Gardens, not so much. The Pagoda is. I yeah. used to hit golf yeah. balls in there quite regularly. Really? Yeah, well, Royal Mid Surrey Golf Club yeah, of course, is, yeah. is, it, it borders the, it does, uh, yeah. the Kew Gardens. So, uh, in fact, on one of the holes, yes. the line that you used to have to take off the tee right. was the Pagoda. I see. I think it was a, I think it was a sixth. Really? Was yeah. it? Yeah, right. Mm. Anyway, the fifth most uh, popular pay to visit attraction in this country yeah. is Chester Zoo. Well, that's the first one outside of London. Yeah, first really? one outside of London. And, and five... See, I've never been to Chester Zoo. You're a friend of Chester Zoo, right? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm reviewing that because when I don't you, agree well, with Well, hang things. on. How long does this review process take? Well, I am. You started considering... reviewing it about two months ago. Well, I'm considering the tenth on the list, mm. five places below Chester Zoo, is London Zoo. I mean, oh. that's amazing. That the size amazing. of London Zoo. In the top ten, yeah. uh, is Chester Zoo the only one that's outside London? Uh, no, after Chester Zoo, got? it's Windermere Lake Cruises. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I've never spent enough time in the Lake District. I, mean, I wish I'd spent much more time. I grew up in the North West. Uh-huh. I never went to the Lake District once. Oh, yeah. That was for a job with the Daily Express. I went to the Lake District Stayed once in the Swiss for a Lahore romantic Hotel. weekend, right? Yes. And bizarrely, yeah. um, when at a time when perhaps I shouldn't have been doing it, yes. right? Um, and wouldn't you know it, stayed at this very nice little sort of boutique hotel. Yes. Walked in mm. to have dinner that night, mm. only to meet somebody that I actually knew. Really? Who was there with her husband. 
That was that was uh, yeah really. Yeah. I mean, it's just an incredible coincidence. I uh, I once had a. Li- it's not the kind of thing you want. right? It's not the kind of thing you want. I once had a liaison. Did you uh, out in the Cotswolds? Oh yeah. Uh, to get out of uh, London what, in Lower Slaughter. Yeah, some, yeah <laughs> somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, like Chipping Norton oh, or yeah. something like that. You know. Okay. And uh, I thought I'd cracked it. You know, it was fantastic. And uh, wasn't driving. Got the train out there, and then got a yeah. car to uh, pick up my companion and myself. You know. Oh yeah. And well, went, you rented uh, one. You mean. Uh, no, a driver. We had a driver. Oh, you had you know. a driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for the rest of the day. Man of the people. For the rest of the day. Yeah. And anyway, um, we got to this uh, beautiful sort of restaurant stroke hotel. Yeah. And squirreled away in the corner was a very famous um, sports TV presenter. Oh, yeah. With a woman who wasn't his wife. Is that right? And that's as much as I'm going to say. OK. What yes. was his initials? I know, can't, I'm not saying anything more. I'm not saying anything more. OK. I'm not saying um, anything more. Did he subsequently get divorced? Uh, I'm not saying anything more. Really? I'm not even going to tell you whether he lived in that part of the world or, okay. or, or whatever. I did can't he? say anything more. I'm not saying anything more. Did he not... recognise you? Uh, well, I didn't want to be recognised, yeah. and neither did he. Right. So we had a Mexican standoff, sort of, you know... Well, just uh, sort of nod and a wink. Uh, no, not even that. Yeah. No, complete blank stares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid, yeah. yeah. How about this one from Pat in Antrim? Mm. He says, hi, guys. Mike reminds me of a quote from Rising Damp, where Rigsby said, you know, once my father got off a bus rather than sit next to a woman with bare arms. <laughs> That's the sort of man he was. Uh, yeah. It's the sort of thing you would do, isn't it? Well, no. Um, well, you don't even like bare arms. Even, I wouldn't like. I'm not even sure you've be, ever been on a bus, have you? Uh, yeah, of course I have. When was yeah. the last time you were on a bus? This morning. This morning. Yes. Where to? Um, the problem was that the oh, I, I meant to tell you this. The roads are very, very icy this morning. I was, I was afraid I might fall over on the pavement. Yeah, okay? you know what I've noticed this this yeah. winter, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're obviously gritting the roads mostly. Yeah, but then nobody's gritting the pavement no, at all. Nobody's gritting the pavement, which is very dangerous right. for older people. So, so yeah. Well, I'm not an old person. I don't but mean even, you. I even I, mean, I, even I felt there was a camber on the pavement, yeah. and I thought, what am I going to do? And I, I came I out of the station the other week yeah. and nearly fell head over heels. Right, because there, there was, you go. I mean, even just outside the tube, there was no there you go. So anyway, I looked up and. There was a bus coming, so I just put my arm up, and the bus stopped. What, without being at a stop? Yeah, I didn't realise that you can actually summon these buses no, sometimes. No, yes, you can't. Can. No, you can, That's honestly. Rubbish. You can, honest to God, you well, can. where do you live? It's in the middle of nowhere. No, no, stockbroker belt, Surrey, and it took me into well, that a town. Well, that proves that it's yeah. in the middle of nowhere. No, no, no. Because the only reason they would do that but, is in a sort of rural situation. But I want to offer, offer advice to our, um, our millions of listeners, right? Yeah. When it's like it was this morning, and there's a heavy frost down the pavement and all that, you shouldn't walk like a normal person walks... You should adopt what I do, and I call it my Siberian shuffle. Siberian yeah, shuffle? Yeah, Siberian shuffle. What, when you walk really fast? Well, no, you take little steps and you, you wave your body left and right to keep a momentum uh-huh. uh, that keeps you upright. You see what I mean? If you try and <laughs> gingerly step onto... <laughs> Sorry, that if sounds you, ludicrous. If, no, if you try to gingerly um, walk on a frozen pavement, you'll yeah. fall over. Yeah. So what you do is you take tiny step, fast steps. Why don't you just put some crampons and, on? And well, why are you ridiculous. making your feet go up and well, down? Well, because I was demonstrating. Well, to you. you don't want to do that. You're going to make that's going to sound no. awful on no, a no, DAB no, radio. No, no. no. And people and are now t- currently washing out their ears. And use your arms as though they were sort of uh, stabilizers on an aeroplane. You know what I mean? To uh-huh. keep your balance. Honestly, really? it's the only way to do it. Yeah. How about this from Chris? He says, "What about going out in your car in pajamas?" Says, my mum used to pick. Me up in pajamas. What's your view of that? Going out in your car in pajamas. Well, you do see an awful lot of women at the, oh, the school, school gates, yeah, on the school run in yeah. their pyjamas. And um, and I have sympathy and empathy for um, mums who are, you know, harassed in the morning, getting the breakfast with their children, all that kind of stuff, and then get in the car and she dashes in the car yeah. because she has, simply hasn't got time to get changed, right. you know. Now, I've got a problem with that. Because I always warn against doing that sort of thing. Like, well, if my kids decide yeah. they're going to go in a car with me or something, and they say, oh, I don't want to take a jacket because yeah. we're going in the car, I yeah. always say, take a jacket because you never know what's going to happen. No, it's right, you yeah. Know, what happens if, you know, you, the car breaks down and yeah, you're sure. Get out and stand by the side of the road for three hours. No, I totally agree. Make sure you're wearing a coat. So I by t- the same token, I yeah. would say don't wear pyjamas in the car. Well, uh, yeah, and 99% of the wise. time you'll get away with it because you just drop your kids off. You don't actually get out of the car, do you? Mums just say, you know, come no. on, be careful, watch the traffic and all that, and you get out of the car. Yeah. So I've got a, a great deal of sympathy for ladies who do that because they, you know, being a housewife and a so mother... So you don't mind them wearing pyjamas in the car as long as they don't go shopping? Yes, basically. yes, that's right. That's I don't mind. View. I don't mind them wearing pajamas in the car, okay. honestly. Right. Um, and and the point is, they'll have their own arrangements for their slippers to get into their the car. Their own arrangements. Yeah, because I mean, in a, in a lot of homes now, you you get into your car in your garage, don't you? And then you press the button, the door goes up, you back unbelievable. out. Unbelievable. And you uh, really are unbelievable. Why? You think everybody's got a garage now? Well, a lot of people have garages, don't well, they? Not everyone. Well, a lot of people. A lot of do. people don't have a car. 
I mean, most, people, think, most people have a car. Most people do not have a car. You're talking absolute nonsense. No, I'm not. Most, look, the people who haven't got a car don't want a car. If you lived in central London... Are you, you absolutely would, sure about that? If you lived in central London, you wouldn't want a car, would you, necessarily, right? Well, you might not have anywhere to park it. You certainly wouldn't have That's a garage exactly what I'm for saying. it. Well, I mean, look, you and I... I mean, lived you think in... about uh, 10 million people live in London, right? Yeah. You're going to tell me that about 8 million have got cars and garages. No. No, of course not. But they, there's people in the suburbs do. What you I'm said saying... most people have got garage. Yeah, if you live in the suburbs. I, but I qualified that by saying central London. You and I lived in Manhattan for years. Yeah. I mean, like decades uh, in some cases. Well, not decades, and, no. And I mean, one decade. Yeah, you wouldn't dream. You didn't live there for more than you, one or two years. I lived there for about three years altogether. Yeah. And you wouldn't... Um, I lived in well, D.C. as well. it's not decades, then, is it? No, one and a half decades between <laughs> us. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the point is, we wouldn't have dreamed of having a car. Eh? It's well, funny enough, I almost bought a car in Manhattan, but one of the reasons I didn't, mad. I didn't end up... Uh, no, because I used to no, because I used to play golf a lot, so I used to yeah. I was finding myself renting cars every weekend. Yeah, sure, that's but what I But actually, what put me off mm. was the fact that it was going to cost about, in those days, in mm. the 80s, 450 bucks a month just to park it. That's right, yeah. In, a, in, a, in, a, in an underground car park. Absolutely. I, uh, when I was in Washington, D.C., yeah. I had an account with, you know, Avis or somebody like that. Yeah. All I had to do was pick up the phone and say, can I have a car? And yeah. then half an hour later, they'd arrive with a lovely car. Yeah, but that's because you didn't pay and for it. I didn't pay for it, no. Well, when people have and to pay for things themselves, yes, right, yes. they can't always afford to have a rental car every time they want one. I used to like going out to Annapolis. Did you? Did you go to, have you ever been to Annapolis? Of course I've been to Annapolis. And it's the home Where of, did you go there? Do you know it's the home of the US Navy? Yes, of course I know that. Uh, how do you know that? Because I've been there about 25 times. Yeah, most people think that the home of the US Navy is San Diego, but well, it's not. not. That's the Pacific Do you fleet. not remember when we went mm. to Portsmouth? With my yes. daughter, yes, uh, who well, knows Annapolis well because she lived in DC for many years, right? right okay, um, and was rather disappointed to discover that the home of the British Navy yes. was about as unlike Annapolis as, as as hell is from heaven. Well, one thing that because uh, I mean, in Annapolis, it's like it's like uh, something out of. Um, What's that movie with Richard it's like, Gere? It's like Pearl Harbor. No, no, it's like the movie with Richard Gere, you know, yeah. an officer and a gentleman. Officer and gentleman. All the right, guys yeah. are walking around with these lovely, uh, spri- you know, That's sprightly right. white That's outfits, right, yeah. Yeah, looking, uh, you know, very sharp. And in Portsmouth, you just yeah. got people crawling around the street drunk. Yeah, but the problem is the the yeah, yeah that's largely no, that's not a very fair representation. Well, of Portsmouth. it was the night well, we certain, were there. Certain parts of Portsmouth, there are students who go on the razzle, you know, to the well, Australian bar and all that students. kind of stuff. But anyway, the point is. The the one, time, by the way. You know, considering that Portsmouth is owned the British Navy, you'd think that they might have a few ships in harbour. Well, they haven't got any ships. We don't have any ships I anymore. I see no ships. No, we don't have any ships anymore. I saw the figures today about the number of surface vessels we've got, and it's at a record all-time low, and the Navy are now £500 million short of budget just to keep them going. I mean, it is an utter disgrace, yes. a damn disgrace, and uh, I'm yeah, very right. unhappy about it. Well, get off his soapbox. Janet says, is Parry styling himself on Dick Emery? Mm? Uh, icy walking. And Terry says, Porky some Siberian shuffle, mm. vodka, moonshine and bleach. <laughs> That's a bit hard. Look. I've taken advice and mm. done some research, and I've come to the frightening conclusion that I'm suffering from exploding head syndrome. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Parry, you're listening to the two mics on Talk Sport. The FA Cup weekend is here, we're kicking it off tonight of course with uh, a live Talk Sport commentary game uh, of West Ham against Manchester City at the London Stadium, we'll be talking to Matt Holland about that coming up. Also, uh, we'll be talking to the guys from Sutton, uh, yep. who are taking on, uh, who is it they're taking on? Wimbledon. Sutton? Wimbledon, yep. uh, which is going to be a bit of a local derby down it in Stockbroker yep. Belt I yep. suppose. And also of course, uh, it's Porky quiz time as well, mm-hmm. and we've got a Trivial Pursuit uh, edition of the Beatles, uh, which we're going to be quizzing Porky on. Mm-hmm. I'm predicting two out of ten. No, I'm an expert. You're I, I, I think it'll be my highest ever score. Well, you got three out of ten the last week was quiz we gave No, you. I didn't. No. You're listening to the two mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry on Talk Sport. Now, I've got a few more tweets for you on uh, okay. various subjects, uh, yep. including the pyjamas one. Uh, Porky's talking sense for once, says mm. John. Okay. Uh, not only are they idle, but they mm. are show-offs, like people who wear shorts in the cold. Yes, that's Hashtag right. Hashtag yeah. look at me. Yeah, that's uh, right. How about this from James? He says, so Porky has newspapers specially flown over mm. to Singapore <laughs> when he goes there. Did he yeah, also have his yeah. ham and cheese baguette flown over as well? No, not at all. Uh, but thank you for inquiring. And Spurs says, better known as Porky Jong-un. Dictator yep. of Talk Sport Towers. Oh, yeah, that's me. Uh, what about Scott here, who says, I deliver to hospitals, Porky, and I detest having to walk past the p- pyjama clad brigade stood in the entrances smoking away. It's vile. Well, what on earth are patients in hospital doing smoking outside the front of a hospital anyway? Well, Which I hospital mean, is that? I have to say, uh, when I was uh, in Glasgow, mm. that was one of the things that surprised me more than anything, was yeah. the number of... Pa- it wasn't so much people, it was patients. Patients, patients outside, yes, yeah, smoking. Outside, I know. quite often in hospital gowns. Unbelievable. In the freezing cold. 
out there. Um, some of them, some of them actually standing attached to drips. Where was this? In Glasgow. In Glasgow. Yeah. No, you're joking. Yeah, I'm not joking. No. Well, because that's where one of my kids was born, right? So Good. I was going there quite a lot God. at one particular time, mm. and mm. there were people literally holding onto poles mm. which had IV drips on them, yeah. which were attached to their arms, smoking. I have to admit that on, on one occasion, because of course uh, I don't smoke, and I've seen, well, I've very seen occasionally, right? In, in the hospital, there's a picture of you last week, yeah, no, with that, a cab driver, yes, I smoking. Yeah, but that that was a that was a stunted stunt picture, cigarette. stunted picture. Yeah, um, no, I um, I uh, I have seen the damage that smoking does to hearts. I've seen some really? heart in the heart museum at the hospital where I'm a, still an outpatient, and uh, it's revolting. You'd never smoke again if you saw them full of tar and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, listen, what I was going to say was, I was gonna say, hey, we've seen this picture by the way it's been tweeted was by john What's johnny mm. uh, listening to your show look what walks out of tesco's in oldham right it's a woman in a dressing gown no you're joking you see look it? good a woman in a dressing god. gown she doesn't appear to be wearing pajamas underneath she's wearing like leggings and boots but she's got a dressing gown on top yeah. oldham's a nice place as well it doesn't look very nice uh, uh, oldham's a great place well, in this particular picture it doesn't look very well, nice. well look, that's Maybe a street in nice oldham. Part of oldham oldham's a nice place i mean you saddleworth moor and all that notorious obviously for saddleworth moor yeah notorious well for... i mean you wouldn't want to go there would you well no believe me there are million pound houses on saddleworth moor mike it's a it's a yeah, it's I a know, very it'd nice it'd neighborhood spooky, indeed it? but it has a it has a spooky yeah, history obviously exactly um what i was going to say was what were you going to say uh, andy says um mike that's hey, me you were in the middle of telling a story weren't you what was the telling story about oh, i don't no, you okay. were telling it. Uh, what am I it? supposed to know? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, hospitals. That's right. Yeah. So um, I have to admit that when I when I was recuperating, um, oh, well, when you were close to death, you mean? Well, well, I, I was a bit closer to life actually by the time yeah. this came round. This is about five or six months in, mm-hmm. right? I did, in fact, one day sneak out of the hospital and go to the pub. Well, that um, doesn't surprise me. No, because I did. You not also get a booze smuggled in? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Are you sure? I, no, I didn't. I'm I sure didn't. you've told that story. Um, it may or may not have happened, but I'm not sure if you see what I mean. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it came from a doctor. Well, of course it happened. Yeah, and, and I, I what tell do you mean it may or may not have happened. Well, Either not... it happened or it didn't. Well, well. You know, memory's a bit vague, but uh, no, the, prob- really? the problem was. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I hadn't had a drink for six months. I went to the pub and had a pint of shandy. Did you? Yeah, I, I just, bet that made your head spin. Well, it? you know, you it was a drink for six months. No, well, there's only shandy, and and yeah, I, no, it's still alcohol. Though. I just missed the I missed the atmosphere of a pub. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Rather than than the alcohol and all that kind of stuff. What sort of pub was it? It was um, it was like an old English pub, to be honest. Was it, it one of the ones in that little ten, little village by the hospital? Yes. Because I know that little village yes, quite well, because yes, you know yeah. that's where my dog came from. Oh, that's right, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I've been up there quite a few times. The reason um, the alcohol issue arose was because um, I was, you know, like at death's door in the bed. Did you tell the doctor you were an alcoholic? No, no, not at all. Why not? Uh, well, because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, and the and the phone rang. No, but I mean that might have been one way to get a drink. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, no, I, I didn't. I wasn't need to suggesting that. that you were an alcoholic. The phone. Obviously. The phone rang, and yeah. um, the doctor who was treating me yeah. told you the story. He was a very f- um, uh, f- big was cricket. Is this the fan. guy with the Ferrari? No, no, no. This is he was a big cricket fan. He was oh, a young yeah. doctor, and he uh-huh. in, in, and he uh, I think he would played for either Oxford or Cambridge University mm. cricket. And when the phone rang, and I couldn't answer it because I had all sorts of, you know, sort of drips and things. Yeah. I said, could you answer that phone for me, please? And he said, yes. And it was Jeffrey Boycott. Was it? Who'd phoned from India. Why? To wish me well, because he'd heard that I'd been taken into hospital. I don't believe that story either. It, it's absolutely true. And if you speak to, next time you speak to Jeffrey, yeah. tell him. Okay. It, it, it was legendary. Was that when he was working, not when he was working here, though? No, no, he wasn't working here. He was, was he not? He, I think he was working for the opposition then. Was but he? he was definitely in India. Was covering, he not work here for a while? Cricket. Did he work at oh, oh, Jeffrey worked here for quite a long yeah. time. And that was how you knew him, presumably. Absolutely. Yeah. And he not only did cricket for us, he did golf. Right. We did uh, We did a couple of open um, uh, golf. He did boxing for, as well. No, no, he didn't do any didn't, boxing. No, no, no somebody okay. else. Uh, anyway, listen, talking about consuming things and all that, right? Oh, yeah. What about this? Yeah, yeah, you mentioned this at the start of the show because you put <laughs> yeah. out a tweet about this I did. before, right? I the did. fact that you're going to try this uh, coconut I'm gonna try, water. I'm going to try it now. Have you got some? Uh, I've got a glass for it. Uh, I haven't got a glass. I'll swing it from the bottle, okay? You can share my glass if you wish. No, thank you. I can lend you my glass. No, thank you. The water out of no, it, no, no, thank you. No, in I'm, fact, I'm, there's a plastic one behind you. Yes, yeah, it's not clean. It's not clean. Right, now, so I've got the bottle. How much was that? It was one pound forty-five. Right, and I'm for a little bottle like that. Yeah, I've put a picture out, folks. If you Mm. want to have a look on my Twitter feed, which is Mike Parry Eight. Yeah, and it is a picture of. I'll retweet that. Yeah, okay. It's a picture of a bottle of raw coconut water. Mm. It says 100% organic, made from nature's best nuts. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought it was coconut coconut water. water. Well, that's what it says. It's not made from coconuts. 
Well, I don't know. I don't, well, are nuts, or coconuts, I suppose, are nuts, are they? Well, you wouldn't call them nuts, would you? Anyway. You'd call them coconuts. It's branded uh, Rebel Kitchen, oh, yeah. which means that that's the, the sort of brand. I look round the back, it yeah. says, Pure Pink Water from Young Green Coconuts. Young I thought green coconuts, coconuts were brown. Well, no, you can, you can, if you see them on a palm, palm tree, yeah. they're often just green, yeah. Yeah. I always thought that when you broke open a coconut, mm. it had water. It had uh, milk in it, well, not, not water. it's not really milk. It is milk. No. We used to win them at the fairground, take them home, smash them, and uh, drink the... Uh, <laughs> what's the problem? Huh? <laughs> what's yeah. we did to everything in Chester <laughs> as a child? Yeah. You'd take it home and yeah. smash it to bits. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. This is great. And, yeah, uh, but it's technically... You, you, they call it mm. coconut milk, but it's not really, right? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, no, it is milk. You get What we used to do is, my dad used to get well, the drill the out. Where's the coconut water come from? Well, this is what I don't know. This is what I'm going to read you in a minute. Oh. So my dad would get the drill out, drill into the coconut. Yeah. We'd empty the milk into a cup, yeah. but then we'd smash the coconut up. And yeah. the, my mum loved coconut, yes. raw coconut, you right. know. So, uh, well, so used to buy bounty. Bounties, yeah, yeah, we used to buy bounty, yeah. Um, the Land of Paradise, yeah. remember the advert? You know, the Blue Lagoon. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't the Land of Paradise, was it? Uh, they came from the Land of Paradise or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it says here, why we're tasty are 100% raw... Well, can't you just tell me what's in it? We've well, well I'm just this. about to. Well, can you speed it up a bit? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Our 100% raw, unheated, untreated coconut water uses only yeah. young green coconuts grown in the Philippines. Right. Okay. Okay. So not local. No, no, so to that's us. not very sustainable. Then, no, is it's it? local to the Philippines. So no, it's got to reply it all here then. Our, yeah. Our coconuts are sustainably sourced from local farmers. Well, they're only local in the Philippines. <laughs> that's what and I mean. They've got to fly it here. That's, that's not what sustainable I mean. at yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, rubbish. No it, wonder yeah. the Arctic's breaking up. Exactly. I mean, hey. there's an iceberg the size of one third the size of whales right. floating around in the in the Antarctic. Why don't they tell it? Say it's the size of the Isle of or something, instead of saying one third the well, size of Wales. Anyway, it says here, why we're pink. Our water is loaded with antidioxins. It's what gives us a healthy pink what's flow. In it? Well, hang on, hang Just on. Just tell me what's right. in it. Ingredients. I don't want to read the whole thing. It, it says, what? 100% organic young green coconut. It says, typical values, energy, 91k. No, I just don't know what's in it. Well, that's, uh, that's what's it. What's in it? That's it. Well, it's, it, must, it must have its ingredients in there. OK, good source By of law. potassium. No, that's not the ingredients. What does it say? Eh? Give it to me. What does it say about no, the ingredients? No, 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 it doesn't say any ingredients. So it, you don't it, know what's in it? It says nutritional information. You didn't want to know about that. Well, and then it just says it's pink coconut water. Right, I'm not, anyway, right, the point tr- is I'm going to swing it, it, OK? Yeah, it is pink. All right, let us know what it tastes like. It has like. no discernible odour. Really? Mm, yeah, it's not like wine. Right, here we go. Well, of course it's not like wine. Is it actually pink? Can you see? It's revolting. <laughs> <laughs> Ghastly. <laughs> Rubbish. Utter rubbish. You know what this tastes like? What? Coconut water. No, once when I worked in uh, the garage, which I worked in, remember? uh, Petrol and all Mm. that. Everything tasted uh, petrol. Bloke came in one day and asked me to uh, put water in his radiator. Didn't tell me the radiator was very hot. So as I took the lid of the radiator (laughs) off and exploded my face. You're lucky you didn't get burnt. No, well, I did get burned a bit, but I swallowed a lot of radiator water. (laughs) And it tastes tastes just like that, honestly. Maybe it is radiator water. Maybe that's what it tastes like. That's disgusting. That's revolting. This right. is revolting. I mean, anybody who buys this more than once yeah. has got to have something wrong with them in their head. Yeah. Because it's just re- rubbish. It, do- it doesn't even taste like water. It tastes like stale water. Stale water. Stale water. be like some kind of horrendous acid flashback for Matt, you know? I Matt don't think so. I think of that he'll remember, awful night. He'll remember that as one of his epic nights. I'll never forget the look on your face, Matt. Uh, Matt Holland's with us. Very good uh, afternoon to you. I'll never forget the look on your face. Look absolutely terrified as he put his arm around you. Good afternoon, guys. Yeah, I'm still scarred. I, I yeah. didn't go to the Christmas party this year, just in fear of that <laughs> again. That's nice, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Absolutely yeah. shocking. Well, yeah. I can tell you, we're, we're sitting here drinking coconut water. I can assure you he wasn't drinking that that night. No, no, <laughs> no. no, no, no coconut a little, water had uh, passed his lips. Something a little bit stronger. Mind you, these West Ham fans are going to need strong drink tonight if it goes wrong, Matty. Well, I'm looking forward to the game, to be honest. Uh, it's the first one of the third round of the FA Cup fixtures. West Ham against Man City tonight, the London Stadium. Uh, I'll be on commentary duty uh, mm. with Sam Matterface. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's a good game, this one. I think mm. uh, it's a test for both teams, isn't it? Yeah, yeah what I find Pep surprising Guardiola. is, is, is uh, what, what, from what I've seen, um, West Ham are, are sort of massive outsiders in their own stadium. Uh, yeah, I suppose they will be outsiders coming into it because, uh, you know, Manchester City, despite... I suppose, having a difficult enough time. Pep Guardiola showing 
signs of pressure, isn't he, a little bit, mm. in terms of his press conference last week, etc. Mm. Um, but but if you look at that, you know, the results of late, um, both teams have had mixed results, really. Mm-hmm. Um, Man City have got some fantastic players, though, some, some great talent. And, and look, you'd expect them to be favourites coming into the game. West Ham have struggled a little bit at the London Stadium. Mm. Um, they, they've not enjoyed it as much as they did at Upton Park. and They're taking a little time to settle there. Mm. Uh, I was there actually against Hull City when they beat them 1-0 recently. And Hull City were absolutely tremendous. Very unlucky not to have won the game. I think they hit the post three or four times in the game. Mm. Um, so, so West Ham haven't quite settled yet in the London Stadium. Yeah, you, when you say them quite settled, of course, when you have it in a different season, an FA Cup run is a great uh, Philip, isn't it, Matt? You know, you can take away your worries and your cares about your your Premier League form and hope for glory between the twin towers, as they were. Definitely, and I think Slavin Bilic has said that. He said that the cup has been diluted maybe elsewhere in Europe, but not in mm. uh, England with the FA Cup. It's still a prestigious trophy, and I think this is Pep Guardiola's first test as well, isn't it, in the FA Cup? It is. First match well, maybe, I wonder if he's going to like the uh, the FA Cup any better than he likes the Premier League, because he, 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 he <laughs> strikes me as a guy who's, who's, who's taken it all as a bit of a shock that uh, that you know suddenly everything's so competitive and the scrutiny is so uh, so mm. intense on him. I mean, he's not, he doesn't look comfortable, does he? Well, lots of people will be telling him as well that the FA Cup, you know, you're going to get shocks in this third mm. round and he won't want to be him that, that's on the end of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I think, but I think when you look back at his record, actually, in, even in Germany, he won the Cup a couple of times with Bayern Munich and he picked generally strong teams. So you know, I, th- I think in his first season as well, particularly, he'll want to be successful. And in the league at the moment, you know, it's, he's, he's got a bit of a job to do in trying to catch Chelsea. Mm. Uh, so the FA Cup might be a great chance of him winning that first trophy. Indeed. I mean, Matt, were you quite surprised when Pep Guardiola actually came out and said, I'm quite, uh, you know, um, shocked by the amount of competition there is in Britain. I didn't have much competition in Germany. I didn't have much competition in Spain. But there's a lot of competition here. I mean, don't you think he might have realised that before he got here? <laughs> well, you'd have thought so. I've been a bit shocked, actually, with some of the things he said generally. You know, mm. the fact that it'll take 10 years uh, to catch Manchester United in terms of their history yeah. and prestige. And then his comment about, uh, I'm already uh, planning on my retirement. I know he's backtracked on those yes, yeah. a little bit yesterday, saying yeah. he's still only 45 and he's, he's not like he's going to retire in the next two or three years. Yeah. Um, but, but a couple of things, a recent... Uh, um, uh, interviews. I've been a little bit shocked at some of the things that he said. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah, I, I, I have as well. And and I think Slaven Bilic, in a way, is better equipped for a mind game type battle with him in his current mood. You know, Pep Guardiola seems a little bit all over the place at the moment. Whereas Slaven mm. Bilic knows exactly what he's got to do tonight and what it means to West Ham. Yeah. Well, he's, he he said yesterday in his press conference, Slaven Bilic, that high pressing is the key to beating Man City. Mm. So I'd expect him to, his team to be really fired up tonight. But both of them have got a few problems. Fernandinho yep. suspended for City. Uh, West Ham have lost a couple of players to the African Cup of Nations and they've got a number of injuries themselves. Uh, but I think West Ham will, will and Slaven Bilic will really fancy this tonight mm. uh, and really trying to get into to Man City's faces. And yeah. if there is any, any, lack, any lack of confidence in that Man City team, then he'll try and exploit that. Yeah, it, yeah. It'll be exposed, I'm sure it will. I mean, this is one of our uh, eight commentaries, a couple of them on TalkSport 2 as well, Matt. I mean, you see any uh, major sort of upsets in the uh, in the offing? I think there's some brilliant games. I've, I've just looked through the fixture list now uh, of the 32 games, and I think there's some brilliant fixtures. I think Eastley going to Brentford, I think that's a, a really interesting one. Martin Allen going back to one of his former clubs. Mm. Um, so I think that that's a, a potential one. Uh, Wickham against Stourbridge. Stourbridge are the lowest ranked team left in the competition. Yeah. Uh, but they're unbeaten, I think, since the autumn. So they go into that in, in great confidence. Yes. It's a shame that they're both away from home, those two sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barrow at home to Rochdale, I think, is a great game. It's, they're gonna be looking like their biggest crowd for 27 years at their ground. And one of the most nostalgic ones for me is Sutton against AFC Wimbledon at Indeed. Gander Green Lane. Indeed. Indeed. That's Sutton's Porky's pretty. local team, Sutton, isn't it? Well, well it's very close, yeah. January 89, when Sutton beat Coventry That's in right. the third round. And AFC Wimbledon, believe it or not, their, it's, uh, their, their first game after they reformed was at Sutton. Uh, yeah. They lost the game 4 0, but that's that's tonight's, uh, that's this weekend's fixture, Sutton against AFC Wimbledon. So uh, I'm looking forward to that one as well. It's, it's wonderful. Did you ever play at the old um, Plough Lane, uh, Matt? Uh, I, I did. I did play at the old Plough Lane. Yeah. Indeed, yes. yeah. Yeah, I was, um, I'm old enough for that. Thanks, Mike. No, yeah. no, no. I just, I just <laughs> wondered because my claim to fame at that ground is you could never get to your seat unless you went through a bar or a nightclub. It was, it was, a, it was a Southern League ground, and it never really got more than that, even when they were in the first division. 
well, to be honest, I only ever played there in the reserves, so there weren't too oh, many right, people okay. watching, watching yeah. me then. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I do remember playing there a few times. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they have got history, these two clubs. You're absolutely right, and I think that will be a cracking tie. Mm. Yeah, be a fantastic they've atmosphere. got a song, haven't they? We're going to be talking to the guys yeah, uh, who, yeah, are, who recorded a definitely. song a little bit later on in the show. Definitely, yeah, that's right. Great. Well, Matt, listen, thanks very much indeed. Thanks, enjoy, Matt. enjoy tonight. You think West Ham are going to do it? Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd still make Man City favourites, yeah. despite yeah. you know West Ham. I think will be right up for it, but I still make Man City favourites. Mm. Okay, mm. all right. Well, it's on tonight, of course, from seven o'clock. Uh, Sam Matterface and of course Matt Holland uh, with live. I'm going to digress Ham, with Matt City. there. Uh, what? I'm going to digress with Matt. What do you mean? I think West Ham will win. Uh, well, I do too, actually, because I think West Ham. I, that's are... why I'm surprised that, yeah. uh, that some of the odds exactly. that have been given for West Ham to win the game. That's right. Quite long for it, to be the... honest for a two a two horse race. Yeah, I totally agree, and I. I just think West Ham mm. are, you know, I look at players like Mark Noble and that sort of thing. I just think they're more up for this competition. Well, you know I think, what I mean? And I think Pep Guardiola, once again, may be taken yeah. by surprise yeah. at how sort of passionate people I, are for the FA Cup in I, this country. I totally agree. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we've had foreign managers the Copa del Rey that they play in, in Spain yeah. is, is not, I don't think, quite as big of a deal. <laughs> Excuse to be me. Do you remember Rafa Benitez was quite shocked yeah. about, you know, uh, Liverpool fans being yeah. upset that they went out of the FA yeah. Cup in his first couple of seasons right. and couldn't kind of work it out mm. till the third season. No, yeah, of course. That's right, yeah. Now, what I did want to do was mention some of the other games we've got coming up yes. live here on Talk Sports. Saturday, uh, at twelve thirty, Man United Reading, yep. uh, which is right after our show, uh, which is the warm up, of course, ten till twelve tomorrow morning. Uh, then we've got at five thirty, Preston North End against Arsenal, Brilliant. which could be quite good. Uh, Talk Sport Two have got your uh, guys over to yep. Leicester. I know. Brilliant. Uh, on Sunday uh, at one thirty, we've got Liverpool Plymouth. Uh, four o'clock, Spurs against Villa, which could be a great game as well. Uh, Talk Sport Two have got Chelsea Peterborough, mm. uh, and then on Monday, Talk Sport Two have got Cambridge against Leeds, mm. which should be quite an interesting game as well. Yeah. Now yeah. I've got a few people talking about coconut water, by the way. Oh yes. Uh, here's one from uh, uh, where are we uh, Steve he says coconut water stopped mm. cramp in the legs I had suffered for years really yeah which is interesting isn't it really um, and Big Cheese says it's the potassium in coconut water that makes it healthy I've just tried it actually mm. and mm. I, don't, I don't find it disgusting well I, don't, I mean I don't I've never tasted just... radiator water but I, I no, can't say I find uh, it, it tastes uh... like that. great for heart function uh, says Big Cheese oh really Oh well, and Louise says, more of it, I tried that coconut water because it's meant to be great for hangovers, but it's disgusting. Yeah. It made me feel worse. Yeah, well, I, that, that's sort of the feeling I had that uh, if I was feeling a bit dodgy, mm. I wouldn't want to drink this because it's got such an odd taste. It has to got it. a strange taste. Yeah, I must say, I'd rather drink regular water. Yes, exactly. To yeah, be I totally agree. A very appropriate piece of music for a Beatles quiz. Well, it's a Beatles song. Yeah. One of the most famous. When I'm 64. Yeah. Which you nearly are. No, I'm not, no. no well, no, you're not far no, off. No, I've entered... Close to 64, you are to zero. I've en- well, yes, that's true, but then so are a lot of people. <laughs> and do. I've entered so early middle age, and uh, I am progressing well. Many happy Thank returns. You. Now, uh, mm. this is a Trivial Pursuit-based game, OK? So it's a yes. Beatles special edition, OK? Yeah, and you can't gerrymander the answers, you well, see. Well, of course ha, I can't. Ha, ha, ha. Well, of course I can't. Mm. I mean, not that I would anyway. Mm. But uh, instead of categories such as arts and history and mm. that sort of mm. thing, mm. it's colour-coded, right? Okay. So I'm going to ask you to name uh, a colour. What colours That's, are they, please? Well, the colours are blue, blue, pink, pink, yellow, yellow, purple, pal- purple, green, yes, and orange. Right. Okay. So you're going to do two questions from each colour. Okay? okay. So you can pick any colour at any time, but okay. no more than two from each. Yes. Okay. okay? Yeah, now, if you it. get one correct, yes, you will hear this sound. Do you stand right. If you get one incorrect, yeah. you will hear this sound. I'm a loser. That's Very good, though. That, that like is that. good, isn't it? Like that, yeah. Right, now, what colour would you like to start with? Yeah, start with blue, please. My favourite colour. With blue. OK. Uh, who sang lead on Baby, It's You? Baby, It's You. Um, baby, It's You. That's John Lennon. Correct. Thank you. One out of one. Yes. Uh, next colour? Pink, please. Pink. Yes. What two song titles appear on the front cover of the first UK Beatles album? Um, sorry, what two song titles? Which two song titles yeah, appear on yeah. the front cover of the first UK Beatles album? Which was Please Please Me. Um, I'm not able to make any No, I know, no, I know, uh, no, no, I'm thinking aloud, thinking aloud. Thinking aloud, are you? Please Please Me, and actually, it might be that one that, uh, that they just played. Was it Please Please Me and Twist and Shout? Incorrect. No! Was it? it was Please Please Me and Love Me Do. Love Me Do. Yeah. Mm. All right, next right. colour. Yeah. Uh, next colour, please. I'm going to go um, orange. Orange? Yes. In what Austrian Olympic town were the snow scenes in Help filmed? <laughs> That's a great Say one. Say that again. In which... Uh, oh, this is like one I would make up, even though I don't make them up. Obviously. Yeah. In which Austrian Olympic town were the snow scenes in Help filmed? Innsbruck. 
Incorrect. No! <laughs> it's uh, Obertown. Well, that's a stupid question. Well, Nobody would know that. Well, you can't blame trivial pursuit. It's near Innsbruck. Well, the, the independent quiz master does nothing to do with this. Yeah. How do you know it's near Innsbruck? Because I know it is. All right, pick another colour. Right, OK, we'll go um, green. Uh, green, OK. Mm. Uh, which two actors appear with wings on the cover of Band on the Run? Um, it depends how you de- how you de- um, how you well, identify really. an actor. Uh, Kenny, now thinking aloud, Kenny Lynch, um, the the guy who Peter who was in the um, you know all the horror films. Uh, what's his name? Peter. Now it's Kenny Lynch is definitely an actor because he's been in films. He was in a Carry On film, and Peter. Oh, what's his name? He was in... Um, I can't help you. He was in The Devil Rides Out and, and all them uh, horror films. Uh, Peter, 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 Peter. I need inspiration. I need inspiration. Let me think. Let me... Think if, um, it's Peter... I can't really help you. I don't... Uh, well, uh, you're not uh, doing very well, so I'll give you a clue. Uh, well, well, Something you sit on. Uh, Peter, um, no, it's not a couch. He doesn't sit on a couch. Peter I'm Couch. No, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to go Peter, Peter Chair, Peter Stool, Peter, Peter Bench, Peter... <laughs> Peter, hang on, Peter. Uh, what do you sit on? Um, uh, let me, let me, let me just think. I've got his. Oh, I know. Who he was in. He was in the Wicker Man. He was in the Wicker Man. That guy. That guy. Well, you've got to give me a name. Yeah, I've got two names. I'm, I'm, uh, Kenny Lynch is one of the names, right? That's uh, that's one. And and the other one is uh, Pete. Uh, um, he died. He died. Um, <laughs> he, oh. You have to hurry. You. Um, Come on. Uh, you know the name. Yeah, OK. Um, Something you sit on. Ke- you Kenny, sit on. Kenny Lynch and, and Peter Chair. <laughs> You're thinking of Peter Cushing. Cushing. I was trying to give you Cushing. Peter Cushing. Yeah, it's well, not him anyway. You don't sit on Cushing, do you? It's Cushing you sit on. Anyway, it wasn't him. It was Christopher Lee. Oh, was it? Oh, okay, and yeah. uh, James mm. Coburn. Uh, so you didn't get any, any of that. What about Kenny Lynch? He's not an actor. He is an he's actor. He's a comedian. He, he's been in films. He's Doesn't an actor. Matter. He's not an actor. But it's not, look, it's not on and here. By the way, it's by the way, I thought this was a, a quiz about the Beatles. It is. That, well, that was, the, that was Wings. Well, you can't complain about a Trivial Pursuit game. I mean, yes, I you don't can. Make, I didn't make it up. Yes, you can. Give me another colour. Yellow. Yellow. What was the first name of Ringo's first wife? Uh, is this a trick question? Because her name was, uh, thinking aloud here, was Maureen Starkey. So... Um, unless it's a trick question, unless her name was, you know, um, Belinda is that your final Maureen answer? Starkey. My final answer is Maureen. Correct. Thank you, honey. Yeah. That's two out of uh, five. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but I've only had four Beatles questions. Oh, One of them was Wings. I'll pick Doesn't another colour. Uh, purple. Purple. Mm. Uh, who was the British publisher of George's Only a Northern Song? Say it again, please. Who was the publisher... The British publisher of George's Only a Northern Song, which I presume is a, a song, I don't know. Only a Northern I've Song. I've never heard of Only a Northern Song, have you? No, and I don't think it was a Beatles song either. I think it was on his triple album. Mm. Uh, who's the publisher? Who's the know? publisher, yes. Right, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say uh, that was the only one that George had published by NEMS. NEMS? N-E-M-S, yeah. What's that? That's uh, NEMS. What does it stand for? Well, it doesn't matter what it stands for. That's the answer, NEMS. Uh, incorrect. No! Oh. It's Northern Songs Limited. Well, that's the same. That's the same company. No, no you didn't. No, it's say, the same company. Say Northern Songs. No. It's the same company. No, it's not. I asked you what it stood for. Nems is Northern E well, M Songs. Why didn't you say that? Well, because everybody knows no. it's the same company. The answer is Northern Songs. No, Incorrect. no, it's the same company. Pick another colour. You've done one of each now. Right, I'm going to have uh, yellow again. Yellow. Mm. Who was the owner of the Casbah Liverpool Club in which the Beatles played? Um... He uh, he died uh, a few days ago, and his obituary was in the Times, oh, and yeah. uh, I read it. And his name is Alan, Alan Williams. Oh, Alan Williams. Alan Incorrect. Williams. No, it's Incorrect. not. It's not. I'm it's not right. Loser. It's not. <laughs> well, it says here it's Mona Best. That was Pete Best's mother. Yeah, well, there you are. Alan Williams actually, yeah. and the Jacaranda. Right, which yeah. is a different place. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah another yeah. another colour, please. Right, not I'll, yellow. Okay, green. Green. Mm. Which album from 1970 contains live recordings that feature an uncredited George on guitar? Sorry, is this a Beatles album or some, somebody else's I can't, album? It doesn't say. It says one album from 1970 contains live recordings that feature an uncredited George on guitar. Uh, do you need the name of the group or the title of the album? I need the title of the album and the group, okay. basically. OK, OK. It's, um, I'm not saying uh, that it is a group either. Uh, the group was Cream, and it was it was um, the group was Cream, starring Eric Clapton. 
and uh, Jack Bruce and uh, the Mad Drummer, you know, Ginger Baker. And um, <laughs> and it was called... You're never going to get this. No, no, it was called um, something like Pictures of something, I think, or something. It had a, it had a picture of a... Pictures of matchstick menu. No, like. no, it had, it had a picture of a tomato on the front. Tomato? Mm. Well, I'm going to have to hurry you. All right, well, it was, uh, the best of cream. Uh, incorrect. No. It was Delaney and Bonnie and Friends was the name of the album. Uh, and it's on tour with Eric Clapton, so you got that one wrong as well. I got Eric Clapton. No, you don't get, I did, you I got get, Clapton. No, you don't get anything for I that. I got Clapton. No, you need the whole thing. You said it was cream. Which you is heard not the, the word same. Clapton? It's Eric not Clapton. It's not the same. I said it was with Eric Clapton. Pick another, pick another colour, not green or yellow. So far, you've got two right. Pink. <laughs> um, mm. Which 1962 Beatles single stalled at number 17 on the UK charts, but was a number one hit in the US in 1964? Uh, sorry. 1962 in this country, stalled in the charts. Uh, yes, what 1962 Beatles singer yeah. stalled at number 17 in the UK charts, but was a number one hit in the US in 1964? Well, I'm thinking aloud. I think that's got to be Love Me Do, but it could be My Bonnie, which was their very first single. No, it couldn't be that, because that wasn't EMI. Um, love, I have to hurry you. Love Me Do. I have to hurry you. Love Me Do. Correct. Thank you. Hooray. Mm. All right, another colour, not pink, yellow or green. You've got three more questions. Purple. Um, OK, purple. Mm. Uh, who played harp on She's Leaving Home, becoming the first woman to play on a Beatles record? You'll never get this one. Wednesday morning at Yeah, I don't want to sing it. We haven't got time. Hurry up. OK, it was that Greek lady. That Greek lady. With the glasses. Nana Muscuri. Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem? Incorrect. No? Uh, it was a woman called Sheila Bromberg. What a stupid question. Nana Muscuri didn't play the harp. She was a singer. What a stupid question. All right, uh, you've got uh, either orange or blue now. OK, orange. Orange. In help, the truck used by Clang to chase the Beatles bears the name of what famous London store? Say that again, please. In help, the yeah. truck used by Clang to chase the Beatles bears the name of what famous London store? I believe, now, thinking aloud here, that was either Harrods or Harvey Nick. Which one was it? It was Harrods or Harvey Nicks. I'm going to say, because I think that the makers of the film thought that nobody in Liverpool had ever been to London, so it'd have to be Harrods. Harrods is the answer. Yes, it is. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, you've got four so far. Yeah. Final blue question, right? Yeah. yeah. Final blue question. Yes, this uh, is lucky. Blue, Malachi colour. Which Beatle participated in the Rolling Stones' rock and roll circus? Um... That was never published, you know, that film. The Stones made it in retaliation to Magical Mystery Tour, and it was, ja- it was Mick sure? Jagger's promotion. Sure, I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, no, it, no, you haven't. You've seen stills from it uh-huh. of Mick Jagger wearing a top hat and all that, but it was never released. Oh, OK. And the Beatle who participated in it must have been uh, it's either Ringo or George. So I'm going to say who's was closest to him? Could Hurry be, up. Could have been John, actually. He was quite close to Jagger. Right, I'm going to say it was George Harrison. Incorrect. No! It was John Lennon. Yeah, I said John Lennon, didn't I? I said so you've John actually Lennon. got four out of 12. Nearly got five, because I was going to say John Lennon. From the car we were to the gander ahead, from Rose to the bar, I'm back again, I'm right in the side, where I was the head, back on a shoebox terrace again. Back on a shoebox terrace, back on a shoebox terrace, back on a shoebox terrace again. Now... Sutton United, yes. uh, which is not a million miles away from your gaff, exactly. uh, become the first non-league side to get a record released in advance of their third round clash with Wimbledon. It's amazing. Uh, we're now going to talk to the man who wrote it, Jeff Martin. Jeff, uh, a very, very good afternoon to you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, Jeff. It's got a touch of the sort of, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, the jam about it, maybe a bit of the clash thrown in, perhaps? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think there's definitely a bit of clash in there, maybe a bit of Ramones, possibly a bit of Cockney rejects. Yes. Um, yeah. we, we don't mind plundering a bit from everybody. Why not, yeah, indeed? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, yeah. when uh, did you write this, and what, what gave you the idea to, or how easy was it to get it actually released? Well, I'll tell you how it all came about. After the game against um, Cheltenham, I was in the bar with a mate of mine, and he said, uh, do you know what? He said, it'd be a good laugh if somebody did a song about Sutton and their FA Cup pedigree. Mm. Um, and he said, I think you're the bloke to do it. And I'd had a few pints, and uh, um, I was sort of, I was boxed in, really. And the next <laughs> thing, I'm in a studio down in Lynn Road in Sutton, mm. uh, uh, Soundbox Studios, recording the song, and um, the rest is rock and roll history. Tremendous. Brilliant. So it's a, yeah. a genuinely local effort, then? 
Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, uh, conceived, born, and um, everything else in the, within the London Borough of Sutton. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well done. And are you a regular Gander Green Lane, uh, uh, and, Jeff? Yeah, I stand on the shoebox terrace, which the uh, the song attempts to immortalise. Yep. The oldest part of the Sutton ground. I've been going down there since the 72, 73 season. Right. Um, and I stand on there with some proper football people. The Cheam Park Dilfs are up there, the yep. Bacon Rollers, uh, all, all kinds down there. Proper non-league club. Excellent. That's, uh, that's great to know. My hometown's Chester, and uh, we've played played Sutton a few times over the last few seasons, been in the same But no, way. you lived in Sutton, though. Yeah, I, well, I, 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 I live very close to Sutton, that's right. And, of course, uh, massive Everyone local... Everyone wants to move to Sutton. Sorry, say, <laughs> say that again, mate. Everyone wants to move of course to they Sutton. Do. Of, course they, of course they do, yeah, and a massive uh, local rivalry with Carl Shelton. I've seen a few of those games at Carl Shelton. So, you know, you've got a, you've got a football in hotbed there, uh, Jeff, and, and, and you're making the most of it. What do you hope is going to happen to this record, and then what do you think is going to happen to the game? Well, I mean, it's already uh, exceeded my wildest dreams, so to speak. I mean, we've yeah. already got uh, massive media coverage for it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just added something to the uh, to the whole occasion Indeed. down there, really, that we've been able to, to, to get the record out, which has been great. Yeah. And obviously not having listened to the whole thing, I'm afraid, I mean, uh, does it make reference to all the various giant killings of the past in Sutton's history? Yeah, it does. It's got a reference to the uh, Coventry game, obviously, but also yeah. the, uh, the Leeds game in 1970, when right. 15,000 people packed into Gander Green Lane, yeah. uh, Sutton played the old Don Revy side, got beaten 6-0. Yeah. Um, but what people do forget is the year before we played Coventry, we played Middlesbrough uh, in the third round of the Cup. We drew at home and narrowly got beaten up at the old Ayrson Park. So mm. uh, the FA Cup runs through the veins down in West Sutton. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it certainly does. What are, you, what are the expectations for Sutton at the best? What could, where could they get to, Jeff? Well, I think, I mean, the, the, the general view around the club is that we're, uh, we're, we're chuffed to get into the, uh, the National League. Yep. Uh, we're consolidating our position in there. Um, we've got a massive increase in attendance. They've done a fantastic season ticket offer. Yeah. Uh, my season ticket this season, I'm not a pensioner, cost me 85 quid. And 85 that's for quid. all the National League games. Mm. Um, we've got 1,100 season ticket holders. We're getting gates of nearly 2,000. The club's on the up. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, it where is. we go from here is really a matter of the, uh, the management and the, the people behind the club, but the fans are 100 behind the board and the management at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. And, and, and how much of a, of, a, of a thrill is it to play Wimbledon? Because obviously that's uh, yeah. down the road, isn't it? I think it's a great draw because you've got two clubs there that have got an incredible FA Cup pedigree. Obviously, before Wimbledon became a, a, a professional club, they had a, a, a giant killing run themselves, played Leeds down at the old Plough Lane with Dickie Guy in goal. Uh, and then obviously eventually they went on to lift the FA Cup uh, against Liverpool. Mm. Um, so they've got an incredible uh, cup pedigree and so have we. So mm. it's, 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 a cup, it's a tie that's got all the romance of the FA Cup. It's just surprising to everybody, I think, that it's not live on the television. Yeah, well, you know, you can't have everything. But if you if you get through this round, of course, you'll be listening avidly to the draw early next week. And uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, you, you might could, be you, you might be looking forward to being on TV the following round. Well, uh, I might you, have to write another song. You might have to write another <laughs> song, mate. And uh, you might be entertaining Everton, you know, or or one of the giants. So, are you? Are you down, yeah. Is it a download? How can, where can you get hold of it? You can get it on iTunes, um, and if you go on the um, uh, Gandamonium, which is our fans group, if you go mm. on at, Gan- at Gandamonium on Twitter, you can find the links there to download it, and mm-hmm. um, you, can get it, you can get it off that as well. OK, just remind us who Sutton star player is who could turn the game, please, Jeff. Oh, we've, got, we've got a whole series of star players in there, but you're probably looking at Rory Deacon. Um, he's, uh, he, he, he can rip a defence to shreds. Rory? Deacon, Rory. Rory Deacon. Rory the um, Ripper. You could pop down and see it, couldn't you? <laughs> eh? You could pop he's, down and see he's, it. He's Busy. quite an exceptional talent, but the whole squad is yeah. packed with talent. We're yeah. very, very lucky. Well, that's, uh, that sounds tremendous. brilliant. Well, good luck it's with it, Jeff. a tremendous tie. Well done uh, for Thanks. writing Thanks, the song. Yeah. Uh, you can get that song on uh, uh, mm. on a download on iTunes, of course. And, yeah. uh, a great song, actually, yeah, I have yeah. to say. That's football songs. Yeah, go. that's football it's songs. It's sort of music that I quite like. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what else is kicking off tomorrow afternoon? Oh. Uh, maybe slightly later, though, and we've got it live on TalkSport. Mm. Preston North End against Arsenal. Mm. Do you think they're going to fly up there in their new plane? I don't know. Isn't that incredible, that plane? Well, you were telling me about it earlier. The Emirates, You're very uh, impressed. Well, I mean, they're sponsored by Emirates. The stadium's yeah. naming rights uh, belong to Emirates. Yeah. Okay, it's known as the Emirates Stadium. So they've now given them a plane. And, and what we see this morning they've is they've loaned this... them the plane, I suppose. Well, they? well, yeah, I'm sure they've only loaned it to them. But I mean, they, you know, they've, they've taken enough trouble to paint the faces of five of their players on mm. the side of it. Okay, well, bizarrely, they've painted yeah. Meza Ozil yeah. and uh, and Sanchez's face on it. And yeah, those are the two players who are currently kind of, shall we say, yeah. uh, under threat of leaving. Yeah, well, that's right. It could be, but I mean, you can change Apparently, the livery uh, on. Uh, Alexis Sanchez is jaded. Yeah, yeah, he's jaded. Yeah, he might but not you, be playing. You can change the livery on a plane very. 
very quickly. But I mean, it's quite incredible. This uh, the the best bar none. Now Arsenal hope the season will take off. They, they, they've got a fully stocked bar on this plane. It's it's a luxurious mm. first class only accommodation sure. plane. And it's going to fly them all over the place. Well, they're only going to Munich, aren't they? Well, no, they're going to be flying to the northeast of England from London to are play p- uh, people like Middlesbrough and oh, yeah. uh, Sunderland. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Fantastic. I mean, let's um, hope uh, they can do that with all the fog that we've had yeah, lately. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, you know, when I told you the other day that I once got on a train and went to Gillingham and the crew team were on Where? the train... Gillingham. Gillingham. Yeah, Gillingham. You said Gillingham. I said Gillingham. And uh, the crew uh, players were actually in the goods wagon. In the goods wagon, Because yeah. they couldn't afford Well, that seats. must have been a long time ago. Well, it was a long time ago. Now they're flying around in planes. Well, by now the they're way, getting paid, you know, £200,000 a week. Well, that's true. Well, by, not quite. By Arsenal, the way, but... getting back to that um, Sutton Wimbledon game, oh. right, a uh, fantastic fact here, which mm. was found out for me by Sandy on Newsreader this yes. morning. Um, 1963, 4th of May, yeah. Wimbledon 4, Sutton United 2, Empire Stadium, Wembley. Yes. Uh, attendance 45,000. It was the final of the Amateur Cup. Oh, yeah. But the, the really staggering um, fact about the game <laughs> is that Eddie Reynolds, mm. who was uh, Wimbledon forward, uh, scored four headed goals to give Wimbledon their first Amateur Cup triumph, OK? Yeah, OK. And it's the only time that four headed goals have ever been scored by the same person in a Wembley Cup final. Is that right? In fact, I think it's... That is quite good. That's a good trivial pursuit question, actually. Yeah, I think it's about the only time... you never get it, would Anybody's you? ever scored four headed goals at Wembley in the one game. Yeah. I remember Malcolm McDonald scored five goals mm, once for England. But not with his head. Turkey, not all with his head, no. no. So that's, that's amazing, that isn't is, it? That is a great question, if you were to be doing a Trivial Pursuit <laughs> mm, quiz. Absolutely. Which, of course, we've just done. Uh, absolutely. And you've got four out of 12, which yeah. wasn't terribly good. Don't forget to follow the two mics at the two mics on Twitter and on YouTube. Just look for Two Mics TV.